Uh, we'd like to welcome you back to GVTV. I'm your host, Jake Chow, with my co-host, Devin Impster Pasic. Should be a good one tonight on a homecoming evening between your Grammy Wolves and the Eagle Crest Raptors. Devin, what are your keys for the game tonight for the Wolves? Uh, I think the Wolves, they have to stop the run defense. I mean, if you look, the, the Eagle Crest Raptors, they're averaging over 180 yards per game. That starts with Josh Wiley, their starting running back, averaging 80 yards per game. And I think Grammy's going to have to shut that down. The Eagle Crest Raptors are 5-0 and on the year, and I think Kongolo Wakalanji on that defensive line and leading the team in tackles per game, he's going to need to step up and uh, get in there. Absolutely. I mean, he's a D1 commit, Air Force. Um, going with Liam, isn't that right? Yep. Correct. The two Air Force commits. Uh, should be a good one um, between, I mean, looking at the defensive side of the ball, uh, um, Kungla Wakalanji, absolutely X factor for the Wolves. They got to run. Um, Eagle Crest, they're going to look to run against uh, away from Kungla, but it's going to be important that uh, Kungla has got to see the, uh, the field very well. And I mean, he does that well already. So, I mean, that's why he got those uh, D1 offers. But looking at the other side of the ball, uh, the Wolves absolutely have to. Um, get their passing game going early. I mean, it's not been that much of a struggle, but against an undefeated Raptors team who's uh, ranked 16th in the state right now, got to get that um, passing game going. Uh, you look at their running back committee between Donovan Burning and uh, Chris Blanks, absolutely important that they keep that up, but also establish that dynamic side of the ball um, through Liam Zarka. Yeah, for sure, because the defensive line is probably on the weaker end of their team. And through the passing game, they have to be careful there as well. It's going to be a good matchup between the wide receivers and the DBs on both sides. They have Cam Chapa leading the team with three interceptions, and he's been a four-year starting varsity yeah. guy, and he's really good. So now it's going to lay on Zay Neto, uh, Nate Denton, who surprisingly has uh, shown out this year uh, as a senior, in his senior year, averaging 75 yards per game. Yeah. So that's going to be a good duel between uh, leading those the team. guys. Yeah, leading the team as well, surprisingly, after only having one catch last season. So... Um, I'm excited to see how <laughs> Liam can put the ball in his receiver's hands. Yeah, absolutely. Great emergence from a, um, the uh, senior here, like one year. Uh, great to see him out here. I mean, if you looking back at the uh, defensive side of the ball for the Wolves, uh, Kungalo Wakalanji averaging over 10 tackles per game, uh, coming in at 11.2 through five games. Uh, AJ Maroney, the sophomore, yep. averaging over 10. Brandon Carr, junior. It's a, these young guys, you don't have just all seniors dominating. You have these young guys, a sophomore and a junior, averaging over 10 tackles per game. Uh, the defense should be uh, needs to stand uh, on their head tonight against uh, a team that can absolutely dominate them and torch them on the ground. Uh, important that these three guys can step up. I mean, four tackles for Lassa, uh, for Wakalanji, three for the sophomore. Absolutely insane uh, to see someone so young. And talking about youth, three freshmen on the starting team. I know, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that? I think it's good. I think they're playing good. Obviously, their uh, number one cornerback, Jackson Flores, already earned that number one cornerback uh, spot. He's played really good so far throughout the first couple non-league games. And then, like I said, that's the thing about this Grandview Wolves team. They won't go away for another couple of years because Absolutely. they have all these young guys. And I think that's part uh, on Coach Doherty and all the other uh, members of the coaching staff getting these guys ready because A.J. Maroney, like you said, sophomore, um, didn't he, wasn't even on varsity last year. Now he's their starting middle linebacker alongside Preston Emkin and making a bunch yeah. of plays. So it's really intriguing and it's really awesome to see these young guys step up because as as you said earlier, like normally what you see is a lot of seniors like just leading the team in every single category and just dominating yeah. all the stat the stats and everything. Yeah. But not with this team, and that's I think really. Intriguing. Yeah, I mean you look like a, like a team like Creek and their JV team is just dominate with juniors yeah. who come up their senior year and get a chance to play for you know the what four time now defending state champions yeah. um, and. You have a team that you can show off freshmen and get them to develop at a varsity level so early is really important for their development, and especially if they want to play after on the high school level, at the collegiate level, maybe even at the pro level. Uh, absolutely important that they have that pro mentality, that varsity mentality uh, at you know 14 years old. Um, and then looking also at the defense still, only one interception. So they're going to try to look to, um, well, Eagle Crest doesn't necessarily have a um, well-established, I mean, they, they're, they run their offense through, through the ground. Through the air, important that they can uh, read the quarterback and get maybe two or three interceptions would be absolutely insane. Only one interception through five games. Yeah. Sir Robinson, uh, the junior, getting that one lone interception. So uh, important that they can try to get those. Uh, and two pass passes deflected. So mm -hmm. important that they can um, hunt down the ball in the air when it's not, but be prepared for the ground game. So yeah. important there. So, I mean, otherwise, you I mean, you can talk about the uh, two-way game of Liam Zarka. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Liam Zarka, I mean, that's the main part of his game. That's why he's got uh, these D1 offers. That's why he's committed to Air Force. He's a great rusher and a great passer. He can do it all. Um, obviously, he's been the starting quarterback his whole time here at Grandview, and he has a QB duel against Joe Steiner yeah. in Eagle Crest, who has had a sneaky good year this year uh, with 12 touchdown passes, averaging about two and a half a game. Um, and he's uh, finding his guys, such as Corey Jackson, uh, in the receiving core. And Eagle Crest, they have a good 
uh, receiving core as well built around Steiner. So I'm interested to see that QB duel and who can come out on top in that one because both guys two-way players and Zarka, I want to see if he can get it going on the ground as well be uh, because as I stated earlier, Eagle Crest D-line um, is not the strongest part of their yeah. team. So we want to see if Zarka can get around those rushers and maybe rack up the rushing yards. Yeah, I mean, already over 1,000 yards passing mm -hmm. uh, through five games, 1,126 uh, through 117 yeah. attempts. So, I mean, that's uh, averaging 14.3 uh, per attempt, uh, has 13 touchdowns, and as long as 79 yards, so, or 76 yards, uh, QB rating at a one, 130, 131, uh, which is, you know, you look at those stats and you say, I mean, how does this guy not have D1 offerings? And yeah. of course he does. So, uh, great to see that. Um, but it's important that it's really interesting because you look at last year's Liam Zarka, um, Coach Doherty had him just take the ball anywhere he wanted. And maybe that was on part because of the sophomore uh, who kind of was a breakout star, Donovan Vernon, yep. at the time. Maybe Coach Doherty a little bit worried about his mentality. And then you look at uh, Ch uh, Chase Dare, uh, or is it Carter Dare? Chase Dare, yeah. yeah. Chase Dare. I got a brother. Do <laughs> um, uh, you look at Chase Dare who uh, – you got a, sat out a couple day, games, or I think discipline was a couple of things that Coach Rory's a big guy about, and yeah. he let Liam run, uh, run, run whenever he wanted. And this year, taking a little bit of a different approach. I mean, you look at um, their first game, negative twenty yards running, yeah. which uh, I mean, that's <laughs> not good. Yeah. Um, and on eight attempts, and then only forty-two attempts on the ground, and it, it, it kind of worries me a bit when you look at his two-way game. That it's almost a little bit too predictable. It, through the air. So, I mean, it, you might look to pull out some of the last season's plays and, and have Liam run on the ground a bit and, and see what he can do. I mean, he has those legs. He's an athlete. And, um, and you, you might say, oh, what about the injury at the end of last year? Yeah. Finger injury. It doesn't have anything yeah, to do. You should no. be worried about his throwing. Yeah. So, um, hopefully we can get some Liam Zarker runs uh, on the ground. Um, and hopefully the offensive line. I mean, you have a big loss in, of course, um, uh, Dom or excuse me, Zachary Henning going to Washington, who's yeah. what ranked uh, ninth in the nation yeah, now. Yeah, starting there. Yeah, top ten as a freshman, as a true freshman, and yeah. uh, great to see him there. And mm -hmm. having a hole in that offensive line could uh, play an impact a little bit mm -hmm. on Liam's mentality. Saying, "Where am I going to find a hole? Who, what guy can I trust in the offensive mm -hmm. line?" But we're through. We're through five games now. We got to trust some guy on the offensive line. Uh, let him uh, trust your guys and mm -hmm. find a hole. Yeah, I mean, what I've seen from those non-league games, as you just stated, uh, Zarka has been under pressure. A lot of the throws he made in that Overland game that we casted uh, on GBTV uh, was a bunch of him on the run, uh, escaping uh, defenders, escaping yeah. all the pass rushers. So we want to see if that Vintage can change. Vintage Russell Wilson. This, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want to see if that can change in this game. And uh, leading now into my main takeaway for this game and the main key, I think, for the Grandview Wolves, I think they got to stop the run game. That's where Eagle Crest yeah. excels. They don't like to pass the ball as much. You see that a lot with some uh, high school teams, especially um, in the Centennial League. Yeah. Um, so I think they are going to pound the ball, pound the, uh, pound the rock. Can't hear you. <laughs> it's okay. So I think they're going to pound the rock, and um, they're going to just rack up all those rushing yards. So I think the D-line has to step up in this game, and also along with that Grandview's rushing attack also has to step up. Chris Blinks, Don Vernon, as you said, a really good running back committee, two guys who are averaging over 50 yards rushing on the season. Uh, we want to see if that can continue into league play, and here as their first game now, we want to see if that can continue. So I'm really looking forward to see uh, the duel on the run, um, in the running game for these teams, and that's my main goal. And I think if Grandview can stop the running game for Eagle Crest, I think they can definitely take advantage of a weaker passing offense and Grandview having a strong uh, secondary. Yeah, I mean, you look, again, I was talking about how uh, Zarka, it feels like he needs to establish his run game a bit. Um, last year, uh, only one 100-plus yard game, but aver was averaging 6.1 yards per carry and on almost nearly 500 yards and 12 rushing touchdowns. Uh, which is insane to think about. Yeah. Um, but this year, uh, through the same uh, five games, because it's the same five opponents, you switch away team, uh, who's the away team, who's the home team, uh, compared to last year. You look at you look at that, and through five games, he has almost five, or excuse me, 300 yards at this at this point uh, in the same time last year. And you look at him where he's at now, and it, and it worries you a bit. And so it, it's exciting to see. But if you uh, uh, for positive. Uh, two touchdowns against Pomona and yeah. one against, rushing touchdown against uh, Farida or Fruta, um, however you want to say it. Um, but two touchdowns, so three total touchdowns on uh, the season so far, rushing, and only 150 yards, 169 to be exact, yeah. uh, just over. Um, so you want to see him establish that. And absolutely, you said quarterback duel will be really interesting as yeah. you look on the other side of the ball. You look at Joe Steiner averaging uh, 185 yards per game, and he's got himself a two-way game also. So should be a good one as both quarterbacks will duel it out, they've got um, a well-established run game. So 
I mean, should be really exciting. Should be a good game. As I mean, what do, what do you think Eagle Crest needs to do? I think Eagle Crest. I think they need to hit Granby with some of those surprise deep plays and uh, those uh, risky play calls from their coach. Like I said earlier, I think they're gonna atta uh, attack the ground game. I think they're gonna run the ball and try to get in between the sticks and try to get in between the Granby defensive line and pick them apart like that. But I think what they will do, they're gonna call a couple of plays that are just deep shots. And I think that that can happen because, like I said, although Jackson Flores and all those other young uh, secondary members for Granby have had good seasons, they can get beat easily because they might not be uh, experienced enough to have that experience of like, oh, they're gonna switch it up and they're yeah. now gonna go for those long plays. So that's my that my main takeaway for that game. I think Granby just gotta be expecting every expect the unexpected for this game. And I mean, five and zero Eagle Crest team want to hand them their first loss on the year, but I think it'll be a really good game. I personally think it's gonna come down to the wire. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, an undefeated Eagle Crest team. But last year, uh, I remember our game against uh, Pine Creek pulled out a little bit of a trick play. Coach Doherty's got a couple in there. You would like to see him uh, run those plays a little bit. Uh, fake out the defense. Fake out the special teams. Use their special teams to your advantage. And uh, again, you said expect the unexpected. Make the unexpected happen uh, if you're Coach Doherty. So absolutely a absolute important thing. Uh, only 18 pass deflections um, so for, the, for this uh, defense, this Wolves defense. Uh, which is a bit low, it feels like. They're leading only three. And you look at the Eagle Crest side, a little bit uh, of a different story. I mean, you look at their, you look at their uh, defensive stat statistics, and you look at guys like uh, Cam Chapa, you, uh, you mentioned earlier, um, a sophomore, Bell, Jackson, uh, and o Owens, a junior, um, who have, what is that, six interceptions combined, yep. or seven combined, actually. Um, and... They have 180 y interception yards uh, combined. They have 29 pa uh, pass deflections. So really important that um, Liam Zarger can read the field and be able to find a guy like Cam Chapman and maybe try to avoid his side of the field. So if that means that your wide receiver one, uh, Nate Denton, is out, you know what I mean? Like you just you don't give him the ball as much tonight. I think that's 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 what it has to be. You have to make those sacrifices to uh, help your team win. You got to look for Kyler Vaughn. You got to look for um, Zay Neto, uh, those are your other two options, and Nate Denton isn't your only option. So important that Liam uh, is able to read the, the field really well. So Yeah, for sure, and that's why uh, my also opinion was that I think they need to get the run game going with Chris Blinks and Donovan Vernon, because as I stated, they have a really strong part of both their offense and their defense. I'd say the strong part of their offense is the run game. Yeah, They're absolutely. averaging over 180 yards per game, and that's <laughs> really great. Insane, like, that's, really that's insane. insane. And on their second year, like you said, six interceptions through five games is a really good stat, and Cam Chapa leading the team with three. So they, their secondary is very good as well. That's why I think the deep plays, Eagle Crest might be on those a little bit, but that's where the run game comes in. That's where those uh, passes to the tight end comes in. That's where those short passes, kind of uh, dip and dink plays are gonna come in big in this game. So I think it's gonna be a bit of a chess match between coaches yeah. because the... Um, it's okay, keep going. Dude, I just had a brain fart. What's it, the strengths? What am I thinking? <laughs> right. And the strengths of both teams, like they kind of like cancel out each other. So I think it's going to be a real chess match between the coaches, and I think it's going to come down to like one big play, uh, what, one big uh, call that gutsy call from each coach that might uh, change the script of the game. And I think this, like I said, it's going to be a close game due to that matter that they kind of cancel out each other. Yeah, and you gotta. I mean, you said big play. So I mean, you said big play. So I mean, you got to be gutsy. You maybe go for it in fourth down territory every single time, whether it's going for a two point conversion, but. I mean, it should be a good one on a wonderful homecoming night. Uh, we want to thank you so much for tuning in to GVTV. Uh, we're going to send it actually to Devin and David, uh, who talk a couple of the players for their insights on league play. Under the Friday night lights at the distinguished Legacy Stadium, outrun the Grandview Wolves looking to get another W on the board. They are five games into the regular season and are 4-1 and one as they head into Centennial League play with their first opponent being the Eagle Crest Raptors at home during homecoming week. They go on to play Arapaho, Smoky Hill, Cherokee Trail and to end their regular season on October 27th at home versus Cherry Creek. <laughs> The players gave us some insight on how they're approaching their league games, along with how their season has gone so far. You know, we just got a real hard working vibe right now. The first four games have went smooth, could have been better. We're sitting at 3-1 and one right now, so I mean, expectations were 4-0. and oh. Because we're here at 3-1 and one right now, I think the whole team's still just working hard, trying to get better each week. 
so we can make sure that we don't have a repeat of that that one loss. But I think so far we've been meeting expectations. Uh, yeah, the vibe on our team is pretty positive. Uh, we have the, me the momentum right now. We're going into league next week and really looking pretty good so far. I think everyone's pretty excited uh, what they can do this year um, and just like getting better each day. And I think everyone thinks that could be pretty, or we could be pretty special this year. Uh, I feel like the vibe, the overall vibe of our team through these first four games is fairly positive. We're just ready to put our head down and grind, keep going week by week. And I think that's meeting our expectations because we set them ourselves. So that's all we can hope for. I personally feel like I've come a little short of my expectations for myself. Um, I personally just have really high standards for myself and how I expect myself to perform. I think I've exceeded my expectations, you know. Uh, I don't really care about my stats, but I just do whatever I want to help the team. Personally, I think I've um, kind of exceeded my expectations, which is kind of um, our passing game. Um, and other than that, I think I could do um, a little bit better in the running game. That just comes with a little bit of time. Uh, I feel like I've exceeded expectations for myself, being that you know, I went through a big injury and I'm on my way back and I came back first game, performed well, so it's exciting. Through these first couple games of the season, the team has found different ways of building chemistry with one another. Um, discipline, you know, it's a new team. We haven't played with each other really much before, so just getting together and knowing each other better, like just talking to each other, seeing each other on the field and stuff, making sure we're all disciplined so we can limit penalties and just little mistakes that end up being really important in those big games. So I definitely think discipline's got a lot stronger over the weeks. We built great chemistry over these non-league games, uh, go going to the NAC or playing at Legacy. Uh, we really learned how to play for our new young players that we have this year. I think just seeing whatever each person's got, um, just put a little more trust into ourselves and then um, just afterwards being able to celebrate together um, to kind of share those moments and I think everyone just um, building a little more uh, like unity within the team. Um, we built our, our, um, our team bond by we just really learned to play for each other and to do our job to help the ultimate goal of the team to just take it play by play and get it done. With Centennial League games having a higher impact on the team seeding heading into the playoffs, the players' mentalities must accommodate to those higher pressure games. Uh, yeah, the team's mentality changes a little bit. It's just, I mean, off river it's just a little more personal. You know, those guys are right down the street. And then it's also just, you know, um, more of a hard working thing. You know, 5A Centennial League's a real, a real tough league out here in Colorado. So it's just something that we, we strive to be at the top of every year. I wouldn't say the league mentality changes, but like we tend to like lock in a little more than usual, even though like we treat every game the same, but league is league, what can I say? Um, I think it shifts a little bit. We know uh, league is uh, a little more uh, rough and competitive, and, um, and so we're wanting to, um, of course, win those big games, and kind of that's when we want to be playing our best is when we're getting into late season. Um, and in those games, uh, I don't. I don't think it does change. I think that it's. It pretty much just stays the same because it's important to not look at who we're playing, but like how we're playing. So just focus on that. Um, I'm looking forward to playing Creek the most. Definitely, you know that's a big, big game. Definitely circled on my schedule. Oh uh, yeah, definitely Creek. You know Creek Week. You know what? Enough said. Looking forward to Creek. Got to go get them. You know, knock them off. Um, quite frankly, I'm looking for, uh, to play every team um, just because we have the opportunity to be do something great and then just kind of get looks for other people and um, kind of just get better all around, especially through those games. With Grandview standing at number 14 on the latest rankings of Colorado 5A football teams, they head into this week's big Eagle Crest game as well as all their other upcoming league games, hoping to boost themselves closer to the top. We wish Coach Doherty and the team the best of luck on their quest for their first state championship since 2007. I'm Devin M. Surpassic. Fake toss, pump fake from Zarka, evades defenders, throwing on the run, oh my goodness, what a throw from Zarka into the a middle of the end zone for a touchdown. Grandview Wolves. Great insights on the Wolves there. We want to wish good luck to the Grandview Wolves in tonight's game. We hope for a good one on this homecoming evening. We're going to now send it to Jake and I back in the booth.
All right, everyone, welcome to GVTV's presentation of this matchup between the Eagle Crest Raptors and the Grandview Wolves. We've got a good one tonight on a good homecoming Friday. We want to thank you all for tuning in on GVTV. The 5-0 Eagle Crest Raptors going against 4-1 Grandview Wolves. Uh, first centennial league game for both teams. I'm really excited to see this one. Jake, what, what are you excited to see in this game? <laughs> Everything. I mean, it's the first real test for the Wolves. I mean, they, they're 4-1 once they lost to Ralston Valley, but it's the first one. It's the league game. This is one of the most important matchups, and it's homecoming. Yeah, what about I, you, Devin? Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, Grandview it has a little bit of a slider edge here, but both teams are extremely uh, are extremely good, so I think it's going to be a close matchup here, and I'm just super excited to see this. You know, it's a great night, no rain, no nothing, so I'm super excited for this one. Sunset was gorgeous earlier, and we're just about ready to kick off. Let's send it to kickoff. All right, so kickoff has just initiated. And Eagle Crest will start with the ball. So leading out the Raptors is the 6'4 junior, Joe Steiner, number 10. The quarterback for the Raptors. Granby student section getting loud early on for the first play of the game. Receiver in motion. Here's the snap. Fake jet sweep. Looking deep. Deep shot first get play of the game. Overshot him. Oh no. Unfortunate start for the Raptors as Steiner just barely overthrows his man. That could have been a first play touchdown and set the tone for that one. Unfortunate miss by Steiner. Looking for his main target, Logan Ryan. Yeah, and it's funny, Devin, because you said that in the pregame show. Watch out for those big plays and expect the yep. unexpected. And fake jet sweep and yep. Raptors almost got on the board on the first play. Second and ten now. Wolves in a bit of a zone, man in motion, and some early movement up front. Flag called on the play. We'll see what this one is. False start on the offense. Yeah, that'll push back. That I mean, that one's got to hurt after uh, missing that play there. Got to hurt to uh, go, uh, go five yards back. Second and 15 is set up now. Raptors in the shotgun. Josh Wiley in the backfield. They hand it to him, breaks one tackle, and gets forward. So that sets up third down, tackle made by Marcus Stevens for the Wolves. Third and 10 now. Steiner evades defenders on the run and almost picked. Oh man. Deflected at the line of scrimmage by a Grandview Wolf. That's A.J. Maroney, the sophomore, who's come up huge this year so far in his first year at varsity. Ten tackles per game for him, almost with a game-changing play, but still a great job to bat down the ball, and that'll force the Raptors to punt now. A quick three and out for them. Great defense by the Wolves, especially getting lucky after Steiner over overthrew his man on the first play of the game. Maybe a little bit of nerves there from Steiner, who, I mean, just a little bit... Uh, less on it. He had the touchdown easy. And dropped punt. And fake he'll play. run. Is this a fake He's going to run. He dropped the punt, a muffed punt. And the punter decided not to punt it. Interesting decision there, but what a play by the Wolves. And that sets up excellent field position for the Wolves here in their own tw or 25. Almost in the red zone already. I believe that was a bit of a bad snap by this long snapper there. A bit low for the punter, but still, I feel like the punter should have punted it once he got into the left and got a little bit of room, but all in all, great job by the Grandview special teams to get in there, and now he outruns the Wolves' offense. And uh, definitely to be able uh, to see that vision and be able to change, uh, expect, expecting the uh, kickoff, the punt return, and then all of a sudden you got a, a runner. Uh, great, uh, great vision there from the special teams to be able to make a quick change. So the Wolves will be led out now by Z Liam Zarka, the senior Air Force commit playing next spring, takes the snap. There's a wide receiver screen to his guy, Vaughn. And Vaughn will pick up about five there on the wide receiver screen. So Liam Zarka on the year, through five games, 13 passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns, as mentioned in the pregame show. A bit of a two-way quarterback there, and you just love to have that for a team like this that's so dynamic in their game play and can get those big plays at all time with uh, Coach Doherty calling plays. Yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> you know, we want to see him run the ball a bit, and but a check down. Um, uh, great job from Ver or for Kyler Vaughn to uh, get out of bounds, stop the clock. I know uh, time management isn't an issue this early, but 
uh, you know, you always want to give yourself even more advantages, and it might make a difference down the stretch. Here's Vernon. Breaks one tackle, but unable to get much. About a two-yard gain there will set up third down. Speaking of homecoming, Liam Zarko, one of the contestants, you go. I didn't. I didn't see it, but I heard about it. Yeah, one of the one of the better uh, performances from Liam Zarko. Unfortunately, didn't make the top three, but ah. uh, it was a great performance. Uh, he had some fun up there. Yeah, I heard all about it. it. Definitely seemed like it was a bunch of fun last night, Mr. Grandview. Kyle Chavez on there too, uh, the kicker for this Wolves team. Third and six. Here's the snap. Looking for a guy short, and he's got him. Breaks one tackle. Jukes inside, inside the 10. Penalty markers fly. But pending the marker, this will be a first down for the Wolves. Almost looked like a face mask on the Eagle Crest defense. Could have been. That would push them near the goal line, if not onto the goal line. We'll see what the call here is. Half the distance to the goal it would be. Yeah. So it looks like the offense shifting back. Could this mean that this play will get called back now? Offense not moving up to around the 10 yard line where the play was called dead instead yeah, moving back. Yeah, it looks like back. it'll be on the offense. Oh. Yeah. Holding on the offense, number 34, Kyler Vaughn, who had that uh, first catch of the game. Unfortunate there, uh, negating the long, the long pass on the slant route from Zarka to his guy. So this will set up now about a third and very long. Third and 11 it should be. Third and 11 here. So here comes Zarka oh, now. Probably a bit more than 11. Uh, looks like third and 15. Still waiting for the official scoreboard to change the downage. But yeah, it definitely seems a long ways to go here. Third and 17 is the official call. Vernon in motion. Zarka takes the snap, drops back. Quick rush, evades right, evades the defender, looks deep. Does he have a man? What a grab! Oh my goodness! That's Dom Henning. Dominic Henning with an amazing grab on top of the Eagle Crest defender, moving the chains. Zarka did a great job. That was Javon Jones coming off the edge for Eagle Crest, coming straight at Zarka. Instead, he uh, went to his right and he threw a dime to Dominic Henning and he made a great catch. Uh, younger brother of Zach Henning, who, la who is now playing at Washington, one of the best uh, college teams in the country, so you love to see that. So a great play will set up first down, just outside the 10, not quite first and goal. Another pass here, quick pass, it's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete, bring up second and 10. Intended for Zay Neto. So Nate Denton checks in the game now, who is actually the Grandview Wolves' leading receiver on the year, averaging about 75 yards per game, three touchdowns. First year varsity guy as a senior, you don't see that that often, so that's really impressive for him. Second down, heading in motion. Here's the handoff, Jukes left and won't get too much there. That's Donovan Vernon, I believe, on the carry. That'll bring up just about third and seven for the Wolves here. So a great job by that Eagle Crest D-line, getting in there and stopping the run right there. Uh, headlined by Dimitri Moore, their junior defensive tackle. He's done a great job so far in this game, uh, stuffing up that run with the few couple plays that they've had early on. And here if the Wolves, uh, if you're the Wolves right now, a, anything but a touchdown would be a disappointment. Uh, gifted, wonderful field position and can't, uh, unable to capitalize on it. Uh, Coach Rory is going to be upset about that. Here's the snap, third down. It's a QB draw. Zarka runs left, goes a bin between. Did he get there? I don't believe so. He gets to about the four-yard line. Needed about two to three more yards to get the first down here. That'll bring up just about fourth and two. So fourth down territory. It looks like they're keeping the offense out here. I believe that this is the right call from Coach Doherty. With the run game not working so far, we'll see if they continue to go with the pass game or maybe once again a designed run for Zarka. Yeah, we wanted to see in the pregame show and Zarka early looks there. Two receivers, one to Zarka's left, one to his right. Two men in the backfield, fourth down, here's the snap. And the fake handoff, the read option, Zarka keeps, and 
He's in! Touchdown, Wolves! Liam Zarko for his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Decides to keep the ball on the read option. A great play call there. The defender bit, and Zarka just dove right in there for the touchdown. Great play design there. Gutsy call from Doherty to go for it on fourth down, but the right call, as you said, Jake, given their field position. Now up 6-0, pending the extra point from Kyle Chavez. Yeah, great uh, play design by Coach Doherty, and now it's blocked. It looks like that one was blocked. Chavez fell down, but regardless, did not go through the upright, so that will keep the score at 6-0 to zero for now. Not ideal, but still good for Granby to take advantage of that field position right outside the red zone. Uh, some good play calls from Doherty. A nice, slow, sustained drive, um, and now they're up 6-0. It'll be interesting to see how this affects the game. Uh, you, sometimes you can get a little bit of an awkward score where uh, maybe a field goal will push you up by just one point, that one point's all you need. So uh, interesting to see if the Wolves offense will go for two in their next touchdown or if they'll just try to take advantage of the awkward score. So Chavez back out now for the kickoff. So we got a first look at the Eagle Crest offense. Obviously Steiner overthrew his man on that first play and then the rest of the drive didn't go anywhere. We'll see if they can bounce back here now. Obviously, we saw some firepower, as we were mentioning, with that deep play along with some others. We'll see if they continue that uh, more uh, gutsy approach rather than their safe run game that's been working for them all year. So kickoff here after the botched uh, PAT attempt. So there's the kickoff now, and it'll just go out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So. Outruns the Raptors and Steiner for their second drive of the game now. Um, A.J. Maroney for the Granby Wolves had that nice deflection. And um, one guy to highlight for the Eagle Crest team on offense is Logan Ryan, their tight end, number 18. Averaging about 70 yards per game on the year and their leader in touchdowns with five on this season. He's Steiner's go-to guy, a 6'5 senior, a big body who can make grabs on top of defenders. So we'll see if he continues to look his way on the second drive. Here's the snap. Here's the run game. It looks like Steiner keeps it. A bit of a triple option play there. Steiner kept the ball, gained about three. It'll bring up just a bit more than three. Bring up just about second and five. Or I guess it'll, the official call is second and seven. You were right. You're right, Devin. <laughs> Here's the snap. Another handoff down the middle. Pushes forward a little bit. Good job by his offensive lineman for pushing him forward. For about a three-yard gain once again. A four-yard gain there, brings up third and three now. Uh, bit of a safe approach we've seen so far with these runs up the middles. Um, Eagle Crest uh, main running back is Josh Wiley, the 5'11 junior who's averaging 80 yards per game. They have a bit of a tandem. Another handoff here is stuffed at the line from the Wolves. Great job by Grandview, a huge third down stop. Looks like the Eagle Crest punt team is coming out. A great, great job by the defense to force yet another three and out. Interesting approach there by Eagle Crest to go three straight runs. Even when you had third and three, I would expect the passing down there, but a great job by this Grandview defense to force a punt. We'll see if this one's botched. Another low snap. Almost blocked there. Almost blocked. This one goes up in the air and tripped. And the ball will be downed at around Grandview's own 45 yard line. So interesting to see how the Wolves will respond after a quick three and out from the Eagle Crest Raptors. Got to get that little bit of momentum and feels like momentum's in with the Wolves after that um, excellent field goal position, uh, the touchdown, and now a quick three and out. Yeah, for sure. Now we'll see if they can capitalize again on pretty good field position, right? Five yards before midfield after a decent punt from the Eagle Crest punter. So Zarka comes out now once again in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left, man in the backfield. Here's the snap, Zarka gets Under pressured, pressure. breaks the sack, keeps looking, looking, and oh my goodness, what a throw, however, dropped at the last second by Zay Neto. I mean, as much as the drop is unfortunate, you gotta give Zarka credit there for making, making way to get out of the sack. I mean, the defender nearly had him there. That's once again 
uh, Javon Jones getting in there. That's his second pressure already on Zarka. He's making an impact on this game for the Raptors. You know, with the Eagle Crest student section coming out, do it's got to be fun. Yeah, for sure. Always sending it over, and uh, oftentimes not an away crowd, but this time Eagle Crest is right down the road uh, able to <laughs> send it back. We'll see if the student sections have some competition here. Second and 10. Zarka snaps. Here's the blitz, oh. and oh, what a bad drop. Donovan Vernon, the running back out of the backfield. Obviously not a receiver, but still a good throw by Zarka. Eagle Crest sent a bit of a, been a, a bit of a big blitz there, and uh, Vernon just unable to come down with it. That's a bad drop. That'll bring up third and 10 now. Yeah, and that was the right call from Coach Jordy to send Vernon up the uh, between the zones. Uh, uh, that was the perfect call. I think Z Zarka just put a little bit too much heat on it, and Vernon just couldn't quite handle it. And like you said, primary position, not a receiver. We'll see if Eagle Crest brings some pressure here on third down, whether they drop back into, into the coverage. Stack the box a bit. There's a the snap. They're in a zone. Zarka winding up, looking deep, and nobody home. Looking for Zay Neto. Neto wants a pass interference call. None there, however. So an unfortunate three and out for Grandview. Um, as Zarka goes to the sideline, it looks like the punt team will come out. So uh, different approaches from this game. We were talking about in our pregame show, uh, the battle between coaches. Uh, Eagle Crest coming out with three straight runs and Grandview coming out with three straight passes. And it's not necessarily th that bad that they got three and out because two of them were just drop passes. If they were to just catch those passes, they would still be on the field right now. So not too much to be mad about there, but still unfortunate that they went three and out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that fourth throw uh, on third down, Zarka just overthrew his receiver. Not sure if there really was contact like Zay Nutter was claiming. But it'll be a punt for the Wolves. So it will be touched. And, oh, interesting decision there by the returner for the Raptors, Cam Chapa. <laughs> that was an interesting uh, call there. Yeah. Kind of like bat the ball away from him. Yeah. Luckily, he was able to fall on top of that for the Raptors. That'll bring up um, first and ten from... Right about the eight yard, or excuse me, the six yard line. Yeah, could have just let it go into the end zone, decided to touch it instead of the 20. Now they're down at the six. So we'll see if those Grandview edge rushers can make an impact here as they have been all season. Obviously, we got to talk about Nkongolo Wakalanji also heading to Air Force alongside his quarterback, Liam Zarka, leading the team with two sacks and 11 tackles per game. Very impressive there. Obviously, the main anchor of this defense. We'll see if he can come up and get a safety here. They are passing, and there is a wide open man. That's Corey Jackson making a man miss. And it looks like he has just enough to pick up the first down on the first play of the drive. Excuse me, that's Xavier Waldron, 6'1", junior. It's gonna... Yep, that'll be uh, first down for the Raptors here. So going a little bit quick here, 20 on the play clock, man in motion. And there's the handoff. Gets to the middle, gets to the second set, and down after about a four yard rush there. Josh Wiley, their main carrier on the carry there. Brings up second and six from the 21 yard line. In the shotgun once again, we've seen that a lot tonight. Back to pass, looks, has a man, gets tackled right away, there's the fumble! Ball's on the ground! Did he hit the ground first? It's gonna be a close one. It appears as if the receiver, I believe Logan Ryan, tried to fall forward and lost the ball as he hit the ground. Looks like they'll call him down, however. Defense staying on the field. Yeah, it will remain Eagle Crest ball. Ryan tried to get some extra yardage there. Ball came out when his elbow hit the ground, but his elbow did hit before ball came out. So this brings up third and short now. Could have been a good break for the Wolves there. Yeah. As uh, uh, another great field position on to start another drive. Instead, we'll be third and two. So here's the run, and he has just enough. Good job breaking tackles by the running back. Josh Wiley, once again, making things happen, running through the tackles. You know, Granby's got some big guys there up front, but uh, Eagle Crest offensive line winning so far, uh, as we stated earlier, got to contain the run game. And while they are containing the run game, they got to get some of these tackles for losses or stops on third downs on the run if they want to end up uh, having a marginal lead in this one. Back to pass, gets crushed as he hits, and a nice trip tackle by the defenseman, Brandon Carr. However, that will move the chains. Yeah, almost uh, the sack there. Luckily, the Eagle Crest quarterback able to get out quickly for a first down. And it appears Eagle Crest moving a little fast, still 25 on the play clock. 
A little bit of hurry up offense, trying to tire out that Grandview D. Yeah, you see uh, no huddle offense in the Ralston Valley offense, Valor Christian. Couple check, little check down for just about two. So not uncommon to see that at the high school level. No, that'll be incomplete. They did call that incomplete. Looks like ball hit the ground first. So second and 10 from the 40. Man in motion. Here's the handoff to Wiley. Wiley breaks the first set of tackles. Gets about five or six there. Wiley is a great guy, a great job at uh, breaking tackles for sure. I mean, you see him getting past that first set of linemen at the line of scrimmage every single time so far this game. That's got to change for the Wolves, but great job by Wiley. You know, that's what he does best. That's why he's the lead back on this team. So third down now, third and four. Another run up the middle. This time, breaking tackles. Oh, man, Josh Wiley is just a beast out there. Looks like he was going to get tackled for no yardage and instead marches his way for the first down. Great job. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's played uh, excellent so far in this game, being able to break tackles and extend drives uh, all by himself. Uh, valuable play for the Raptors. We'll see if they continue with the run here. Another man in motion play. This one, Steiner will drop back, looks to his right, and it's almost, oh, intercepted. almost intercepted. Caught on the right sideline, and he's tackled out of bounds. That is number 17, Coda Becker, 5'10 junior. Only one catch on the year. That's the second one on the year, and it comes in a big time, and Eagle Crest is moving the chains nonstop. This Grandview defense looks like the hurry-up offense is working. They're getting tired. Yeah, always uh, tough to be able to... Um, work on your heels a bit as uh, the offense keeps moving forward, and especially when they start gaining momentum, uh, it can definitely be discouraging. So here's the snap, handoff, and this time he'll go absolutely nowhere. A loss of one or no gain on the play there for Wiley once again. So now Eagle Crest will take their time a bit. Marcus Stevens on the tackle for the Grandview Wolves. Yeah, second 11 here for the Raptors on the near hash. Here's another handoff. And, ooh, Wiley able to stay on his feet for a second there, breaks some of the initial defenders, but gets tripped up after about a two-yard gain. So that'll just set up a four-yard gain. That'll set up third and eight now, a bit of a different territory that Eagle Crest has been used to this game, mostly dealing with short yardage third down situations. In the shotgun now. Receiver in motion. Two, three to his right, quick pass, and the receiver just didn't see it coming. Xavier Waldron, just miscommunication there between receiver and quarterback. Uh, looks like uh, Steiner wanted to make a quick pass to Waldron, but Waldron was just running his route. Looks like some miscommunication, didn't know what route he was gonna run. So that brings a fourth down, a good stop at the 30, around the 34 yard line. You talked about gutsy plays, Devin. Looks like the offense is going to stay yep. out for the Raptors. This is definitely, I would call, a gutsy play. Fourth and eight from the 34-yard line. Definitely a passing situation here. Quick pass. Deflected. And deflected and incomplete. A big stop from the Grandview Wolves on fourth down. That was Jackson Flores, the freshman in coverage there. On Great Waldron. pass deflection. Great job there. Looks like uh, Steiner put it right in the, the receiver's chest, but Flores is able to just bat it out and like he's uh, a bit too much heat on that ball as well. So huge stop by the Grandview defense, and out comes the offense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we talked about um, where that ball was def uh, deflected and almost looked like it could have been intercepted for the yeah. Wolf's second interception on the season. Instead, we'll go turnover on downs. So out comes the Grandview offense. Third drive of the game now, following a three and out. Here's the handoff, has the left side, breaks a tackle or two. That is part of their tandem duo. Chris Blanks, the sophomore running back, uh, as we were mentioning in our pregame show, uh, Grandview has two amazing backs in Vernon and Blanks, uh, both averaging over 50 yards per game on the season. And, and not so much early on, but Blanks a little bit of a flash of uh, what could be to come in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Averaging over 50 yards per game for both of them. Um, Really great X Factors and a great running back committee almost. So, yep. Showing that off early in this S one. Second and five here. Denton in motion. Here's the snap to Zarka. Looking for the screen. It's not there. Scrambles to his left. Will he pass? He breaks between a defender. What a play by Zarka. 
and that will be enough to pick up the first, I believe. That will move the chains. Liam Zarka, once again, as we mentioned many times in the pregame show and just now, two-way quarterback, making things happen. It looks like he was going to get sacked, broke between two defenders, and was able to lunge forward for that first down. Yeah, about absolutely. a six-yard gain. Turning what almost looked like a tackle for loss, a sack into a positive gain, and a first down, extending their drive. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the benefits of having a two-way quarterback right there for sure. Great job by Zarka. Here's a snap. Handoff now. Has room up the middle. This is Blanks juking and gets cut sticked at around the 45, fighting for more yardage. Will be down around the 44, but a great run from Blanks. Another first down, and the Grandview Wolves are marching, Jake. Let's see if they can capitalize on this one. There's that running back committee we were talking about, Blanks, playing good so far on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Going to keep him out there, uh, it looks like, as, uh, I mean, two back-to-back -back plays, and... He's been out there, so just about uh, 30 seconds left in this first quarter. Could be the last play, looking like the last play of the quarter right here. So man in the backfield once again. Looks like a run play. Play action, Zarka keeps, and there's a man in it. Can he get it off? He can't. What a great sack by Eagle Crest. Tamario Walters, 6'1", junior, number eight with the sack there. That's a huge loss as that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Not a good way for the Wolves, but obviously a huge momentum changer for the Raptors as uh, Walters is able to get in there and take Zarka down for a large loss. The call is a uh, loss of 12 for the Wolves on the sack on Zarka. So great play there from the Raptors to be able to push them back and um, now the Wolves only have two chances to make up 22 yards. Yeah, so end of the first quarter break here now. We'll be back when action resumes for the second quarter. Looking for a career in construction? Looking for a career in construction? Join our team at Academy Roofing. <laughs> Back from the break here as Wolves find themselves with a huge loss on first down, second and 22 here. So a flip of field now on their own 44. QB draw once again, it's been working. Zarka breaks the tackle, gets some room. A good run, still on his feet. Here goes Zarka, has blockers, and he gets down to the 25, signaling for a first down. What a play, Liam Zarka. That's their quarterback right there, taking it, breaking tackles, getting it all the way up to the 25 for a huge 30-yard run. <laughs> yeah, great reads there from Liam Zarka, and Turned a second and 22 into a first down. Yeah, great play there. I mean, not many other quarterbacks in the state that can do that. I mean, I mean, Coach Doherty, who else would call a QB draw on second and 22? But when you have a guy like Zarka, I mean. No brainer on those. Ex <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brings up first and 10 now right outside the red zone, right at the 25. Takes the snap, some pressure. Has some time, looks deep. Zay Neto, incomplete, in double coverage there. Bit of a risky throw. Neto had a chance at it. A little bit too high there, bringing up second down. Yeah, good look there from Liam Zarker to try to find Zay Neto, but uh, just some double coverage there, and Neto just couldn't quite bring it down. Yep. So second and 10 here from the Eagle Crest 25. Three receivers to his right, heading in motion, low snap, bobbled snap, and just deflected at the line of scrimmage. Unfortunate series of events there for the Wolves, a bad snap by the center, leading Zarka to just throw it away, and the ball gets batted down by a defensive lineman. Yeah, that could have easily been a sack there, and another uh, uh, huge loss, as we saw in the sack earlier, but uh, Zarka able to get it off and just turn it into a uh, 
neither in positive or in negative play. Yep, so two straight incompletions now brings up third down from the 25. We'll see if Zarka can create some magic again. We'll see if he can find one of his main guys, maybe Henning, who had that great catch early on. It looks uh, on third down as well. It looks to be his third down target. We'll see which direction he looks here. Maybe Doherty will call up a QB sneak. <laughs> we'll see. There's the play action. Looking, has a man across the middle. It's Neto. It's caught. Makes a spin and getting dragged forward, forward, forward. And down at the 11-yard line. Zarka is pumped. Neto is pumped. And the Grandview Wolves keep the drive alive. Not quite first and goal yet, but first and 10. A great third down conversion. A great route by Neto to get open there. Yeah, great vision there from Zarka to be able to uh, find Neto in the open space. And uh, Neto able to pull it down and keep fighting for extra yards. And that brings up just about first and goal. Could it be first and 10 on the 11-yard yeah, line? Yeah, first and 10, one yard away. From that so that's actually good for them they have still they don't have eight to get chances, in the end zone yep. here but they just got to get to the one yard line now yep. yep eight chances to get into the end zone yep uh right at the 11 yard line so five on the play clock play clock play action zarka looking goes right has some room looking for the pylon keeps outside and a good tackle by the eagle crest defender still a good run by zarka to evade defenders that'll bring up about a nine ten yard run chapa with the tackle there a bit slow to get up on the play. It will be right at the one yard line. So first and goal, like we were talking about. They're going in a hurry up offense. Want us get in the end zone quick now. Zarka, handoff, and it's a keeper and he keeps it a touchdown. Once again, the same play call as before. Zarka keeps on the triple option, same exact play, and he is in the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the game, adding his season total to five now. Great play calling from Coach Doherty, and Liam Zarka kept that drive alive the whole time. Absolutely, and that's what we talked about uh, in our pregame show, the 2A ability of Liam Zarka yep. showing it off tonight. So now 12-0 after the uh, botched PAT last time. We'll see if they keep the offense out for two. It looks like they are. So, smart decision here to make it 14-0 to make up for the extra point. We'll see if they can convert all two-point conversions from the two-yard line. Three receivers to his right, none to his left. Here's the snap. Shotgun. Looks. And incomplete. Looking for Nate Denton in the end zone. Just a bit of miscommunication between receiver and quarterback. So, 12 nothing after that drive. Um, unable to convert either the first two-point conversion or the first PAT. So... Unfortunate there, but still 12-0. Uh, two of their drives have been really great. Uh, they had really good field position on that first one, and then this one, just a slow, sustained drive that really was helped by that Liam Zarka 30-yard run on uh, second 22. Yep, and now you're going to look to your defense to be able to make a huge stop here as Eocrest feeling maybe a bit of pressure as mm -hmm. they uh, feel the need to score here. Yeah, and if you're the Eagle Crest coach, if you're Coach Schmidt, I feel like you got to come out passing at this point. I mean, obviously they were three and out real quick in like less than a minute after they just ran three straight runs down the middle. Uh, now facing a 12-point de de deficit, excuse me, uh, runs up the middle, I just feel like won't cut it. I feel like they got to get the ball in the air as we saw in that first play of the game. Like I was talking about, some of those gutsy, unexpected plays, we'll see if those happen in on this drive. So here's the kickoff, really short kickoff. Fielded at the 30, and... Was it botched or did he just go to the ground? Looks like he just fell to the ground. So a short kick. The ball will be placed at the 33-yard line. So out comes Joe Steiner. Uh, we know what he can do. Uh, we haven't seen it so far this game. We'll see if the play calling changes. And Eagle Crest, I feel like they got to get on the board here with just about 10 minutes in the second quarter. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Eagle Crest it almost feels like a must-score drive. Obviously, it's still early in this game, but... Um, Granby with all the momentum right now. So lining up in the shotgun once again, Wiley in the backfield. First and 10. The snap and it is a keeper for Steiner. Steiner keeps it and a great tackle on the outside. Oh man, what a great tackle by the outside guy there. Yeah, a great way to wrap up there from the uh, defender there for the Wolves. So that's Sir Robinson on the tackle, the guy with the only interception on the year for the Wolves, making a great outside tackle there. Steiner had the edge, but a great job going low and making the tackle. 
So that's second and eight now after a two yard run. Another handoff. Tries to get the edge and nothing going there. The Grandview defensive line gets to Wiley. Almost looks like a uh, loss on the play. Looks like it will be a one yard loss. So that'll bring up third and nine. Third and nine. Grandview student section on their feet. Big third down here for both Eagle Crest and Grandview. And it's a botch snap. Steiner on the ground somehow gets out of it looking to pass. And incomplete. A great recovery by the corner there. What a weird play. A botch snap at the line of scrimmage. Steiner was still somehow able to come up with it, evade pressure, and almost hit his man. Almost like I, that was almost intercepted there. Yeah, great job by Brody Flores to get involved there, number 22, and break up that potential first down. So three straight, three and outs for the Eagle Crest offense now. Another punt for the Grandview Wolves. If they can capitalize here, this would be huge going into halftime or for their chances for the rest of the game. Yeah, absolutely, and being able to put on another score on the Raptors. So a good punt here. Fair catch called, and he touched it! He touched it! Oh, no! Recovered by the Raptors at the five! Oh, that was Kyler Vaughn calling for a fair catch and just lost it. That's a gut-wrenching play as the Raptors just like that, as if they just got a 60-yard play. First and goal now for the Raptors. Really just not what you need if you're the Wolves. Yeah, absolutely not. Now they have first and goal right on the uh, five-yard line. Yeah, I mean, it happens to the best of us. I mean, botched. I mean, the ball's so high in the air, sometimes you got to wonder. I mean, it is hard, especially for a high school guy. But really, that that's that's game-changing, to be completely honest. Uh, momentum changing as well. Eagle Crest, we'll see if they can punch it in here. Uh, not in the shotgun this time. Lined up, uh, fake toss, and he has a wide open man, and he's got it. Touchdown, Raptors. And just like that, the game is changed. Logan Ryan, that is Steiner's number one guy. That is his sixth touchdown on the year, 6'5 senior. A great play call from Coach Schmidt. A uh, fake toss with a guy in motion, and then a bootleg to the other side, and um, Ryan was just wide open in the end zone. So now 12-6, to six, pending the extra point. And um, unfortunate series of events for Granby, but a bit of luck involved, and just like that, Eagle Crest is back in it. Interesting lineup here. And they're going for two with a weird formation. Does he get in? Nope. No, we did not. Short. Interesting there. Looks like they had like five guys on each side trying to confuse the Grandview defense there. Didn't end up working. Got stuffed a yard short. So 12 to six here, obviously a really good stop for the Wolves because if it were to be 12 to seven and uh, Eagle Crest were just to get a touchdown with no extra point, they would still be in the lead. So now this forces them to make an extra point to take the lead. So huge play by the defense. Yeah, absolutely. And interesting call there from Coach Schmidt, you said. Um, yeah, I mean, five guys on the outside, only like two guys in the middle. Yeah. Felt like the uh, linebackers could have easily just Blitz that and they were able to and stop the run. Yeah, those formations like you see very rarely, mostly just to trick the opposing defenses and I guess Granby defense was ready for it, so good job by uh, the defense there. Kickoff here. Another short one. It'll bounce and interesting decision there, but fielded at around the 23. So out come the Wolves now. Uh, after that botched punt return by Vaughn, uh, let the Eagle Crest Raptors just get a one play drive for a touchdown. 12 to six is the score with eight and a half left in the first half. So outruns, guys in blue. Lining up, Denton in the slot. Darker in the backfield here. And it's a handoff, uh, some quick jukes. And he'll get about three. 
And that was Donovan Vernon losing his helmet there on the play. And that will end up being a three yard rush. So second and seven now. So outruns Zarko with the play call from Doherty. Second and seven now. Vernon motioned. Empty backfield now. In the shotgun. No pressure. Time to throw. Risky throw there. Intended for Vaughn. Unable to come down with it. So that will bring up third and seven now. After a bit of a high pass from Zarka, uh, Vaughn unable to come down with it there. So third and seven, looking like a passing down here. We'll see what Coach Doherty calls. We'll see who Zarka looks for. He looked for Henning earlier. He looked for Neto on the second touchdown drive. We'll see who he looks for here on this uh, crucial third down in this game. Could find Denton. I uh, haven't heard his name called a ton yep. tonight. Yeah, we'll see if Denton makes his appearance. So Henning in the slot, three receivers to his right. Here's the snap. Vernon goes out for a pass. And it's caught. Did he get there? That'll be close. Looks like he will. They will move the shades. So just enough for Dominic Henning to get the first down there. That's his second catch of the game. Just enough bringing up a first down from the 34-yard line. So a great, great poise by Zarka right there. Uh, Eagle Crest brought some pressure. Looks like he got hit as he threw and still able to deliver a good ball to Henning, and Henning just able to fall forward to pick up the first. You know, it's really interesting seeing the uh, uh, Eagle Crest offense work compared to the Wolves offense. Hurry up offense for the Raptors. Zarka coming out to the sideline every single play to hear, get a, hear a play call. And looks like a timeout called by Doherty. Did, didn't like what he saw either on his offense or the formation that the Raptors were in. So first time out for either team in this one. Yeah, so I mean, uh, we hear a lot of uh, opinions about the uh, interesting, the mentality for uh, the uh, offensive coordinator for the Wolves, uh, having Zarka run up all the way to the, uh, the sideline to hear the yep. play and then run back out to the huddle. Uh, you hear a lot of guys complain about how he's, uh, especially just a couple years ago, sophomore starting quarterback, why are you making him run so much? Yep. Uh, save his energy for the end zone. Save his energy for uh, big plays that he can create. Um, but, I mean, it's just really interesting to see the different opinions on uh, how the Grandview offense runs their, their plays. Yeah, for sure. Definitely different in comparison to Eagle Crest, who I believe uh, Coach Schmidt just puts up some sign and uh, Steiner's able to read that. But Grandview takes their time. Zarka gets the play call from Doherty or the OC. First and 10. Just about the seven minute mark here. Hand off. And not much brewing there as they will call the play dead with the ball still in the hands of Vernon. Vernon unable to get much there. So we saw blanks a lot on the last drive. Now we're seeing Vernon here and it looks like now both of them are on the field. Yeah, interesting uh, formation there with two running backs. Uh, yeah in your running back com uh, committee, so. Second and nine, only a one yard gain for Vernon. Looks like the e the Raptors stacking the box. There's the cornerback blitz, and it's a handoff. Never mind, Zarka kept it. Zarka's still on his feet somehow, and he'll get to about the 40 yard line. I thought initially that Blinks got the handoff there. We've seen a lot of that. Uh, from the Wolves, those read option, triple option plays that actually have been a result of a touchdown for both. Those were their plays on both of their touchdown uh, drives. So third down now, third and four. We'll see if we'll see what the play call here is. Pass or run. Two running backs, as you said earlier. Eagle crest up a little bit. They got do it going. There's the handoff. Zarka keeps and he somehow gets through the middle for the easy first down and some more down to right at midfield. I mean, Zarka, it's really like amazing how he's able to like get in between defenders so easily, just like split the defenders. I mean, he's super shifty for a quarterback um, and he does a great job of just keeping drives alive. I think that's one of his main strengths on third down. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, great to see uh, him use his legs. Trying to find Vernon. And he does. 
Vernon tries to fight forward, gets about five yards there. So we've seen Vernon line up as a receiver, either in the slot or on the outside multiple times in this one. Yeah, you saw uh, Blanks and Vernon, both sides just in this similar formation yeah. to uh, where we are now. And then they just run out to the outside. So a bit of a competition between the student section. Some noise here. Zarka drops back, goes right, somehow gets past the defender. Another juke! And Zarka picks up the first. He is shifty. Liam Zarka somehow able to escape the rushing number 97. That is one of their best rushers, Dimitri Moore. I mean, I feel like at some point you gotta criticize the Eagle Crest D-line for not being able to take him down. I mean, Moore had him, and Zarka just seemingly put the ball over his head, juked another man, and was able to pick up the first down on second down. Zarka just keeping the drive alive nonstop. He is the main reason that Grandview Wolves are on top right now. Yeah, absolutely, and his dynamic two-way play right now, uh, utilizing more of his run game and his feet more than his arm, yeah. but uh, mostly because the coverage from the Eagle Crest Raptors has been excellent tonight. So now, Empty backfield, Zarka has time, great protection. Looking, guy in his face and he'll just throw it away there. Bit of a late hit, so Zarka, very good uh, protection from the O-line, however, great job by the Eagle Crest secondary to not allow any receiver to get open and forcing Zarka to throw it away. Second and 10 now. This side. Once you uh, get the do it chant going, you <laughs> yeah. almost feel like you're never going to stop. So Second attempt here from the uh, 38. And there's the handoff to Vernon, and nothing brewing there. Right back at the line of scrimmage will bring up third and 10. Not an ideal situation for the Wolves. Uh, protection hasn't really been there on some of the runs up the middle, get, been getting stuffed at the line of scrimmage or even for the a loss of game uh, a couple times. I mean, the run game only has been successful because of the shiftiness of Zarka yep. and able to change direction, be able to juke out a defender uh, as we've seen a couple times tonight. Yeah. Third and 10 from the 38. This is where the Wolves have excelled so far. We'll see if Zarka will use his feet, and it is a handoff, unexpected there. Vernon breaking tackles, breaks another, and he has the first. Still moving forward, and Donovan Vernon picks up around a 12-yard gain. I mean, that is one of those calls that you just love to see from Coach Doherty. As you saw Eagle Crest playing everyone back, and Vernon had a wide open lane, and all he had to do was find the open lane, make a move or two, and he had a first down there. Good call by Coach Doherty, and good job by Vernon. Absolutely, that'll bring up a new set of uh, downs, just move the chains, as it'll set up first and 10 from the 31. So another handoff to Vernon, cuts inside. Still pushing moving, for that first down. And still pushing and finally called dead by the referees. A good gain of about seven for Vernon. So right as we were criticizing the run game, starting to pick up now, uh, Vernon starting to find those holes, the offensive line starting to uh, play good, create those holes for the running backs. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it, the uh, loss of Zach Henning yeah. uh, felt here, and uh, you could feel a little bit tonight the uh, leader on that offensive line, a excellent player now playing at a D1 uh, top 10 school in the nation for football. Yeah. And uh, you're missing that on your offensive line, you're going to feel it. For sure. Fullback in motion, and it looks like that was either a false start, illegal formation, something there likely will push the Wolves back five yards. So it will be a false start on Zane Neto, the wide receiver. I, I thought it was on the fullback there at first for jumping a little early, but Zane Neto called for it. So really unfortunate there, second and one to second and six. Still not a long ways to go, but you'd much prefer only one yard to go for sure. Yeah, and we almost run down here to two minutes as a bit of a longer drive. For sure, long, slow, sustained drive. They're picking up yardage. They're right outside the red zone, and we'll see if they can convert before half hits. And play action. Zarka keeps, 
evading defenders, looking in the end zone. Caught. Oh my goodness, what a catch in the end zone for the touchdown. Eagle Crest just got mossed. Oh my gosh. Huge play there from the Grandview wide receiver. I believe Savahola looked like the sophomore who brought in his first touchdown. That's his first touchdown on the year, Julian Savaloha. The wide receiver sophomore. And a fake, oh my goodness, throw it to the end zone. Incomplete, interesting call from Coach Doherty, a fake field goal, you don't see that that often here, but obviously with not converting any extra point, really hurting them now. Instead of 21, now it's only 18, so really unfortunate following that first missed PAT, just a bit of a downward spiral on the extra points and the two-point conversions there. But still, an amazing catch by Savaloha there. Yeah, I mean, getting a little creative. Uh, looked like they were going to take the PAT and then ended up being a fake. So uh, getting creative because you're going to need a two-point uh, conversion eventually. Uh, unless you score uh, seven touchdowns, then you'll have uh, right on time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, still unfortunate. Only 18 rather than 21. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them. They are still lucky that Eagle Crest did not get their extra point or their two-point conversion. I mean, at this point, uh, inconsequential, up to still two scores no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it would be three scores if it was uh, made all of those uh, PATs. Yeah, yeah, that's the big thing there, 15 rather than 12. But two scores still comfortable here as 141 left on the clock for Eagle Crest. So Eagle Crest going to have to go into the two-minute drill here. We'll see what Joe Steiner has in him in that offense. And an onside kick, a trick onside kick. Will they get it? It was close there. It looks like Chavez might have came down on it. And no, Eagle Crest came down with it. But oh man, the guts that Coach Doherty is showing right now is insane. A fake field goal, an onside kick. However, I don't know if that's the right call. With only 140 left in the second quarter, do you really want to give Eagle Crest like that much better field position? in this situation, especially if they can get in field goal range for their kicker to do the job. I don't know about that. Obviously, uh, Chavez, the kicker, almost came down with it, but still, I, I like the gutsy call. Yeah, there. absolutely, but I mean, uh, you think about a touchback is at the 20. Uh, you give them 25 yards, which is a ton, but they still have 55 yards to go to the end zone. You gotta trust your defense. Yeah, all three timeouts, a minute 41 to go. I mean, I don't know if that's the right play there. Drop back for Steiner, looks deep, has a man! Oh my goodness, another overthrow from Joe Steiner. His second of the game, and his receiver has got to be mad at that one. Looking for his main guy, Cam Chapa. And Joe Steiner is going to want to have the first play of the game in this one back when he looks at the film of this one. So after the overthrow, second down, 135. Man in motion. And this one is a handoff. Uh, breaks the first set of tackles, gets to about the 50 yard line. Five yard gain, clock ticks. Still has all three timeouts, however, Coach Schmidt. That is Josh Wiley on the run. Continuing their hurry up offense now. Just under 120 remaining. The snap, quick throw, and he's got him. Soft coverage from Jackson Flores there. Allows. Allows one of his main guys, number 88, Xavion Gamble, 6'1 junior, to get it there. Still haven't called a timeout, very be, being very conservative with those. A uh, bit of an option there. He pitches it to his guy, and Wiley has it, and a good tackle to keep the guy in bounds. Keeps the clock running. Eagle Crest, just a reminder, does still have all their timeouts, and clock stops, so... Yeah, uh, college rules, clock, st clock stops for to uh, let the first down markers. I see. So that's what it is there. Steiner winds up, and that is his third overthrow of the game, although that one there wasn't much room, even if it was on the money. Um, you had Brandon Carr as well as Sir Robinson in coverage there. Intended for number one, Xavier Waldron. So stops the clock. 38 seconds left now. Second and 10 from their 29-yard line. 
Still might need to get a little bit closer for field goal range, but obviously they're aiming for a touchdown. Quick wide receiver screen and just a bad pass from Steiner. Don't know if the receiver was in the wrong position or what, but takes a second or two off the clock just for an incompletion. 35 seconds, third and 10 from the 29. So here's the snap, man in motion. It's a pitch, what a trick play. He has to get out of bounds here, and he does. A flag called as well. Could this be on the offense or defense? This could be drive changing. If this is on the offense, this will pull them out of field goal range and way back with little time to go. If this is on the defense, that puts the Raptors immediately in field goal range. We'll see what the call is. Ref's gonna talk it over here. So it looks like without the flag, he still would have been short of the first. Flag down at the 20-yard line. It looks like there was some blocking going on there, maybe a holding on the offense, holding on the defense. Still discussing here. Big call uh, with just under 30 seconds left in the half. So, on the offense, on number one, Xavier Waldron, it is a holding as he was trying to block there. So that will bring them back. That'll bring him back to the 30 yard line. Bring up third and 11 here. Yep, third and 11 is the call. So really unfortunate call there. Right now would be about a 47 yard field goal. We don't know if that's in the range of the Raptors kicker. So bit long for high school kicker. We'll see if he can get closer. A quick slant route, and he drops it. Unfortunate there. Looking for his man, number 88. Once again, Xavion Gamble. Unable to go there, so I feel like the play would probably be to go for it here on 4th and 11. Not, not much, much to lose. <laughs> not, yeah, not much consequence if they don't pick it up. So, yep, the offense is staying out now. Yeah, because even if uh, the uh, Wolves defense make a stop, they still have nearly 70 yards to go. So to here it is. The pressure comes. Looks deep. Another overthrow. There was some pressure on the play there. But Joe Steiner looking for his guy, Gamble, once again. Incomplete. At some point, you got to bring up these overthrows, just completely ruining the momentum on these drives for the Raptors. I mean... Uh, not much time for Gravy to do something, but hey, you never know with Zarka's arm, Zarka's uh, quickness, uh, Nate Denton, how good he is at getting open down the field, Zay Neto, his ability to stretch the field. We'll see if Doherty plays a little conservative here. We'll see if he tries to take a shot. Uh, I would imagine they try to run out the clock, uh, maybe uh, get, generate a little bit of momentum with their um, run game. I mean, it's been good so far, and give a boost of confidence for the offense and say, hey, we can move the ball. So they will take a knee, and that will take us to halftime. 18 to six is the score at half. Grandview Wolves up in this one. The Eagle Crest Raptors, uh, excuse me, the Grandview Wolves will receive the second half kickoff, so that's probably why they elected to take a knee there. So we will take a break now at halftime, 18 to six, and we'll be back with more second half coverage after this. Looking for a career in construction? Join our team at Academy Roofing. Excellent pay, benefits, and training with Colorado's premier roofing contractor. Stop by our office at 1610 Jasper Street or give us a call at 303-360-0708 and join us at the top.
And now, please welcome to the floor, the brand new Darcy and J.D. Schroeder. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Grandview's 2023 Homecoming Royalty Celebration. Please turn your attention to the 50 yard line as your Homecoming Royalty fellows take their places.
Congratulations to our final nominees. Your class of 2027 homecoming court winners are Noah Blake Daughtry. And Hondi Chang. Your 10th grade nominees are Sophie Rossibayan. Ruby Idol, Megan Merrill, Caitlin Mitchell, Kayvon Oliver, Zachary Richard, and Avery Walsh. Congratulations to our final nominees. Your class of 2026 homecoming court winners are Zachary Richard. And Caitlin Mitchell. Congratulations to all of the 2023 Homecoming Royalty winners. We are on path. Go ahead.
Looking for a career in construction? Join our team at Academy Roofing. Excellent pay, benefits, and training with Colorado's premier roofing contractor. Stop by our office at 1610 Jasper Street or give us a call at 303-360-0708 and join us at the top. Both on the goal line, uh, they've been the benefit of some lucky plays from Eagle Crest, some botched plays. Uh, we had that bo uh, botched punt return. We had some overthrows from the, their quarterback, Joe Steiner. But um, overall, Granby taking advantage of their opportunities they're having. I think that's the reason they're on top in this one. Yeah, absolutely. And for the actual real time, we'd like to welcome you back to GBTV, back from the break here. Uh, finally got the yeah, audio to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you said, uh, Joe Steiner doing a great job for the Raptors. But uh, Wolf's doing an even better job being able to limit them. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side of the ball, Liam Zarka being able to use his legs, not just uh, utilize just his passing game, listen as a quarterback, of course, but uh, almost feels like a running back yeah. uh, using his legs and uh, single-handedly kept this Wolves uh, team in it. Yeah, for sure. Doherty sees that uh, Zarka has the hot hand on the ground, so he's been running those read options, those triple options, because they've also gotten their other running backs involved, Vernon, uh, Banks. Uh, they've gotten all those guys involved. So now they're starting to pick up on the run game. Uh, obviously, uh, they have one passing touchdown. So I think it's going good for the Granby. And I think if they just keep up what they're doing so far, I think they'll definitely come on top with this one. But I think Eagle Crest will come out with some different strategy, especially on the defensive end in this one, to kind of hold Liam Zarka in check a little bit more in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, we get ready for uh, to start the second half here, um, who started with the ball? I believe it was... Uh, I believe Granby will start I, with the ball. Yeah, I think it will be.
I good? All right, so back now for second half action. As the Raptors come out, they will be kicking off first, and Grandview will have a chance to extend their lead to three possessions with a touchdown here as they will open the second half with the ball. So on special teams early in this one, we've seen some short kicks from the Eagle Crest uh, kickoff specialist. We'll see if he can maybe uh, boot it back so that Grandview doesn't start with as good field position as they've been having so far in this one. The main story of this game has been Liam Zarka on the ground. He has two touchdowns um, in that sense, and then he also has a passing touchdown uh, to sophomore Julian Savaloha as well. So he accounts for all three touchdowns. Uh, Granby's gotten their run game going, and we'll see if Eagle Crest has maybe some different lineups, different formations, something along those lines to come out with the second half. So here is the kickoff, and he gets to about the 32. So Doherty will get, talk to his guys a little bit. Zarka will get his guys ready, and they will head out to start this second half. If they can get on the board here early on, that would be huge for them. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting to see here what Coach Doherty will do as um, we'll start on offense. So here so far now, two receivers to his left. Running back in the backfield. Here's the snap, drops back to pass. First option not there. This is where he's good, uses his... Uses his feet and just throws it into the dirt. Nothing brewing there. And a late flag. Will that be a late hit? It looks like it'll be a necessary roughness. That was one of the latest flags I've ever seen before. <laughs> the ref threw that about five seconds after the defender hit Zarka. And it looks like it will be unnecessary roughness. We'll see for sure, though. Yeah, interesting there after the uh, intentional grounding was the call. Interesting. I don't know about that one because Zarka was out of the pocket and he had uh, Vernon in the area. I mean, we see a lot in the pros, the quarterback's throwing it to the ground just into the dirt near a receiver, and that's what happened there. So interesting call. Uh, that's probably why the flag was so late. Uh, refs had to have some time to think about it, but uh, a bit of a killer call there as that now brings up second and 20. I believe the rule is within 10 yards of any eligible receiver. I'm not sure if uh, it was an eligible receiver, but... I mean, devastating penalty as that'll bring up second and 20. But we saw second and 22 even longer. Yep. And guess what we saw after that? Exactly. We'll see if Doherty draws up something similar for Zarka here. But, I mean, if you're the Raptors, you got to be expecting it. So there's the run. A good. Oh, did he lose the ball? Eagle Crest signals they have it. Flag down. 
and waiting for the official signal, and Eagle Crest has it. The Raptors have it. A great start for the Raptors in this one. Once again, huge bad turnover for the Wolves. Gives the ball to the Raptors in plus territory. We had Kyler Vaughn drop the punt early on, and now we have, I believe, Chris Blanks. Never mind, Donovan Vernon visibly upset on the sideline after that fumble, throwing his helmet. Yeah, Which that's so gotta unfortunate. Be, that's got to be heart shattering for a young guy like that, Donovan Vernon. Uh, in his junior year, second year varsity, absolutely heart shattering to be able to fumble the ball in uh, that position of the field. And Steiner with the keeper, and then the pitch. What a play call. Can he get there? He will. Touchdown, Raptors. First play of the drive. Xavier Waldron, Coach Schmidt, cooking up a great play call there. Steiner first made the first read on the read option with the keeper. Had some room, pitched it behind to Xavier Waldron, and he used his speed to get there. 18 to 12 now. The Eagle Crest will go for the extra point here. Attempt to make it a five point game. And Grandview turnovers is what is allowing Eagle Crest to stay in the game in this one. What a pitch there from uh, the Eagle Crest quarterback to keep that play alive and bring them within win score. Yeah, for sure. And that's the second time that off a turnover, the first play of the drive, they've scored. We saw that when they were on the goal line for the first time when Kyler Vaughn dropped that punt. And then we see it right here as well as the extra point is up and it is good. So 18 to 13, five point game. And that's devastating for the Wolves there because you get that, uh, you get the ball back at the end of the second half or at the end of the first half and you're on top by two scores. Mm -hmm. You're expecting a long drive, draw out the clock, get a score on, put the pressure on. You're up three scores now. And all of a sudden, Eagle Crest is in within one score. Yeah, for sure. Momentum completely on the Raptors side. Now we see their student section into it while Grandview's a little bit more on the downside after a horrible start, honestly. Uh, Obviously, unfortunate fumble for Vernon. He was just going for extra yards and seemed to get uh, punched out at the last second. So, And a good job by the Eagle Crest uh, play calling and everything to be able to get that touchdown on the first play of the drive with the short field. So once again, here we are with the Eagle Crest kickoff. This time, however, a five-point game. Kicking from the left side this time. Near hash. This one's a good kick, and it will be... Got by Neto, breaks one, has the sideline. And a pretty good return from Neto. A 31 yard return to be exact, taken right at the pylon. So a bit better than the normal 25 yard line, six yards better to be exact. And we'll see if Grandview can clean it up now. Uh, we do see uh, Chris Blanks out there to start. We'll wonder if uh, Vernon will see as much playing time in this one. So first and 10 from the 31 now. Denton in motion. Looked like it could have been a jump. He throws and he has him and oh, a hard hit. Caused the incomplete pass and it looks like the defender will be injured there and Denton limping as well. Yeah, huge collision there and it, I mean, it's just a part of football to, uh, I mean, you gotta be able to have the mentality and all the physicality to be able to um, take big hits on that. Yeah, for sure. He had Denton in the slam, but um, although the defender got hurt, it was a great job of him to break up the pass, uh, and we'll hope he's okay as he's down now. So... He is able to get up on his own power and walk off on his own. So good to see there. So following that short stoppage, that'll bring up second and 10 once again from the 31 yard line for Grandview. Zarka drops back, has a man deep looking, Neto on the sideline, he's got him! Can he break loose? No! And fumble! The, 
it looks like he was down. A big gain of 45 yards. Zarka to Neto. We have seen that connection a lot this year. Zay Neto averaging 70 yards per game and has four touchdowns. Seems to be Zarka's red zone guy. And that was a great route by Neto. They had five guys running routes out there and great protection from the O-line and Zarka just did what he does best and put it on the money down the sideline. Absolutely, great play call by Coach Doherty to have another run up that sideline, be able to evade the zone a bit and come down with a huge gain for the Wolves. So now this brings up first and 10 at the 25. Here's another pass, first option out there, Zarka looking and incomplete. Dropped by Nate Denton. He did have some pressure coming from Cam Chapa, the safety, unable to haul it in. So second and 10 now, and la yeah, like you said, talking about that last play, uh, they had all those guys running routes, and like you said, Zay Neto ran down the middle and then eventually was able to get open down the sideline where, uh, and split the zone. A little zone. bit of a post play. Yeah, definitely, there. definitely a good route by Neto and obviously a good ball by Zarka. So second and 10 now, once again from the 25. 12 on the play clock, no one in the backfield. Passing play, some pressure, and Zarka still evades it. Looking, and oh, what a throw to Nate Denton. He's going, he's going, and he's tripped up at around the six. That is great reads that you want to see from a guy who's going to division to play D1 football. As you saw there, the guy, the defender was on Denton, and Zarka, All day. Zarka looked like he was going to scramble. So the linebacker came up, and Zarka made a perfect read right as the linebacker came up. He hit. Denton right down the middle and as I said earlier we haven't seen much of him in this one but there he is now making a big impact so that'll bring up first and goal now from around the six yard line we'll see if Granby can punch it in here this would put them up by two scores blinks in the backfield and they hand it to him never mind Zarka keeps it only gets two yards here to the four yard line second and goal just under the 10 minute mark in this third quarter. Second and goal, Zarka, the toss, blinks, has the edge and he walks into the end zone for a grand view touchdown. Chris Blanks with his fourth of the year, the sophomore running back, comes in and is making good use of his playing time. A great job, he realized he didn't have the middle, he hit the edge and it was wide open and he walked in for the score. Now 24 to 13 pending the extra point. Yeah, absolutely, and a great response after the um, easy touchdown by the Raptors. Uh, great way to uh, start the second half for the Wolves. So the kick by Chavez, goes straight through the uprights. So 25 to 13 now, Grandview maintaining their lead, their two possession lead, although Eagle Crest did cut it close there with that uh, first possession of the half touchdown. Uh, a good drive by Grandview, some big plays, that uh, especially that big uh, 45 yard gain to Neto, along with uh, that other one to Denton, and then Chris Blinks uh, able to punch it in. Looking around the other scores from the 5A football class. Uh, yesterday, uh, Cherry Creek beat the Cherokee Trail Cougars 48 to nothing in a Thursday night football. Um, and then Pine Creek, who the Wolves lost to in the playoffs last year, who could be dangerous this year, uh, beat Fountain Fort Carson, who was also undefeated, uh, 40 to 10. So interesting uh, uh, slate of games uh, on Thursday and Friday of the Wolves game. It's a little bit of an onside kick, a little bit of a squibber. And a great tackle. They do throw the flag. Could that be helmet to helmet contact? Or maybe he called a fair catch. Just not a smart play by Chase Wolf, number six, the cornerback. We'll see what the flag is, but it looks like it will be unnecessary roughness. And one of the more interesting uh, stories from the 5A classification, the juggernauts, Valor Christian Eagles, uh, 
A little bit of a scare. Went down one to four. Uh, uh, excuse me, their record one and four. Only one win through five wow. games. And uh, just picked up a huge win over the undefeated and six ranked. So it is unnecessary roughness. We'll add 15 yards to the Raptors. Yeah, uh, as I was saying, uh, a Castleview team who's undefeated and ranked eighth in the state in the top 10. And Valor Christian just walked in their 21 to three victory over the Sabercats. Um, so interesting as Valor looks to um, set their season uh, right here. Yeah, unusual for a team that's normally always goes deep in the playoffs to start 0-4. Good thing for them to get their first win, as you said. So the first play of the drive for the Raptors, they're already in Grandview territory. Uh, was a Joe Steiner run, rush. Gained about two on the play. Second and eight. Steiner drops back to pass. Goes to his right. Doesn't have anyone and is incomplete. Broken up there. Good job by number 24, Brandon Carr. One of the main guys on this Grandview defense. Great job by him to break up the pass. Bringing up third down, third and eight. Yeah, a little bit of a, it felt like a little bit of late contact after the ball came out from Carr, um, wrapping up the defender. But no flag given, so we'll might have been able to get away with a little bit of something. And this is a quick screen, a shifty play call, and he's unable to get to the, unable to get to the marker. He'll be about three yards short there. That'll bring a fourth and short. A great job by uh, the Granby Wolves to be ready for that. And we'll see what Eagle Crest does. And looks like they're keeping the offense out. Yeah, fourth and four here. Uh, maybe just a bit outside fourth down territory. But if you're down two scores here, you got to go for it. Yeah, for sure. I feel like Coach Schmidt is definitely uh, confident in their team to pick this up. So we'll see now. Two receivers to his left. And play action. And incomplete. No flags, clean play, and the Grandview Wolves with yet another fourth down stop. This secondary has been great. Brandon Carr once again forcing the incompletion. The junior, he has been huge in this one for the defensive side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, making, showing up in when it matters most and making the big play. Uh, just saw two consecutive plays there on that drive um, as he's able to stop the Eagle Crest Raptors. And that brings out the Grandview offense. For sure, we see, we've seen a really good game from these Grandview corners. Most of the damage done by Eagle Crest on the ground or just on some uh, trickery. But um, all in all, during the pass plays, Grandview cornerbacks have been really good in this one. So that's good to see for sure. Here's the handoff now to Blanks, I believe, and he will pick up a measly two yards. That is Vernon, my mistake. You see Zarka jogging out from uh, getting a play after from um, his offensive coordinator. Second and eight after the two yard run from Vernon. They got do it going again. And yet another handoff to Vernon, looking to that left edge, has it, and somersaults over a defender just about two to three yards short of the line to gain bringing up third and short, but a great job by Vernon uh, splitting through defenders and picking up more than it looked like he was going to get initially. Yeah, just about third and three here. Third and three. Two receivers on the outside. The toss to Vernon, cuts it in the middle, and a great tackle by the lineman of the Raptors. No gain on the play. A great stop there by number eight, Tamario Walters, who had that sack early on on Zarka and now had a huge third down stop. The offense will stay out here right at midfield at the 50, fourth and three. Nope, no they won't. A quick change, yep, there it is. They typically get those. Uh... Seems as if Doherty feels a bit confident in his defense to get a stop. Uh, this, If this is to be a good punt, this would pin them in uh, pretty deep territory. So Doherty timeout. does call a timeout. We'll see if maybe he's thinking things over or not. 
Yeah, interesting. I mean, you see a lot of the time from Coach Doherty. Uh, he'll stop the uh, – uh, he'll keep his offense out, and then he'll stop and uh, have the, uh, the punt team come out real quick. So a little bit of a trickery, able to catch uh, the defense um, – on a misstep a little bit uh, has happened is worked in the past where uh, they've actually had a recovery after. So, I mean, Coach Doherty loves running that. He, he's uh, yeah. familiar with that play and um, real believer in it. So he does end up changing his mind. So Doherty uh, didn't like what he saw for the punt team and now he sends out the offense. Fourth and three. He is confident in his offense to pick this up. Neto, Vaughn, and Denton are the receivers. Bit of eye form here. Zarka has some time. Defender in his face now. Throws. Incomplete. Clean play. No flags down. Zarka wants one. But no flag is thrown. And the Eagle Crest Raptors making another big play. Forcing a turnover on downs right at midfield. 50 yards to get into the end zone to make it possibly another one-score game. Yeah, absolutely, and right at the 50-yard line here for the Raptors, and I mean, important that they score on this drive. Again, time is going to be their worst enemy, uh, and it's important that the Eagle Crest Raptors are able to score on this drive. So here is Steiner now. Drops back to pass, throws down the middle. A risky pass that goes incomplete into double coverage. Yeah, two defenders closed in on him and wasn't able to reel it down was Otero Tapia. Sean Otero Tapia, intended receiver. 5'10", senior there. Brings up second down, second and 10. Grandview. Running some man coverage here. Here's the run. Get some room with Wiley. And he'll pick up around seven. A good run there. Some good blocks up front by the interior lineman. So that'll bring up third down, third and short. Third and three, the official call. So three receivers on the left, Wiley in the backfield. We'll see if he looks for his guy, Logan Ryan, who caught the touchdown earlier, who's been his number one target so far this year. Waldron in motion, the handoff is to Wiley, breaks the first tackle and gets the first down and more. An additional eight yards for about a 12 yard gain there. And the chains will move for the Raptors uh, in a bit of a hurry up offense here, obviously. Um, time kind of ticking, down by two scores. Uh, and it worked earlier on that uh, first touchdown drive in the first half, running that hurry-up offense and tiring out the Grandview D. Looking uh, elsewhere in the Centennial League, Arapaho up on these Smoky O Buffaloes, 56-7. to A little bit of a Broncos score. <laughs> Steiner oh! almost intercepted there. Unfortunate for the Grandview Wolves, that is Ravano Plummer. Almost had the easiest pick six of his life right there. He'll be kicking himself in that one. It looked like it was actually Derek Williams, the uh, defensive end junior, <laughs> who almost uh, read that at number 50. Maybe playing a uh, off-ball linebacker almost. Snap now, second and 10. It is a handoff. And Wiley will pick up about four on the play there. So Wiley has been efficient in this game. Um, obviously their number one guy on offense. Their number one running back this year. So third and six is the official call. Steiner back to pass, has a guy and almost intercepted again. It's Ravano Plummer again. The second time in a row, he has dropped the interception. And Steiner has got to be careful with these passes. I mean, just throwing these super risky throws and Plummer is just 
sniffing out these routes and perfectly predicting them, jumping them perfectly, just can't hold on to the ball. So Eagle Crest offense will stay out now on fourth down. Guess who's got catching practice on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Fourth and four, play action. Steiner drops back, looks deep, and once again overthrown. Turnover on downs. The Wolves and the Raptors exchange turnover on downs on each ensuing drive. So now the Wolves offense will come back out with just over four and a half left in the third quarter. And once again, in coverage, Brandon Carr. He has been a huge part of this defense so far this game. Uh, the junior stepping up big time this year, and this game has shown his major improvement throughout his years playing on this team. First and 10 from the 28. Zarka drops back to pass. Here's the rush, and is that a fumble? It called it. It's it's live. It's on the ground. Who has it? It almost looked like Zarka had forward motion. Not sure what the refs are going to say. They said it was a fumble, and he will, but Grandview did recover back at the 19-yard line. Yeah, Zarka, right as he went in his backwards motion, got hit, and the ball just came out. No forward motion there, so a huge loss of 12 and brings up once again second and 22. Remember what happened last time? Yep, I do. And we'll see if the Wolves can make this up. Obviously not the night, not an ideal start. And got to give credit to Eagle Crest for getting that pressure off the edge. Very good this game. And there it is, the QB draw. This time nowhere to go for Zarka. Picks up about six on the play. Didn't find the room he found on the last one. So third and long coming up now. And that's twice that the Wolves have run uh, runs on second and 20 plus. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's gotta be predictable um, from Coach Doherty. And I mean, it's not a bad strategy to be able to eat off. I mean, six uh, and make this a little bit closer uh, brings up third and 17. Yeah. A little bit better than second and 22. Yeah, they wanna be a little bit safe. They don't wanna throw those deep passes and risk throwing an interception or a fumble as we saw on that first play. So third and 17, long ways to go. We'll see what Doherty has drawn up here. Zarka by himself in the backfield. Has a guy down the middle of the field. Nate Denton brings it in. Nate Denton brings it in. Unable to reach the first down marker, though. Still about five yards short. Fourth and three is the official call for the 14-yard gain for Denton. The offense will stay out here once again. Uh, they didn't convert last time, but Doherty remains confident in Zarka, remains confident in his offense and his pass catchers. And here we go again. Here's the switcheroo into the special teams now. We'll see if Doherty calls a timeout or sticks with it. Probably will depend on if he likes the formation. And it's a fake. It's a fake. Vaughn threw it to Denton, and he's short. Interesting, interesting decision from Coach Doherty. I mean, at times you got to say that you got to love the gutsy play calls, but then at times you got to say it's going to cost the team some. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting call from Coach Doherty. You know, you got to appreciate, you have some level of appreciation for uh, looking out for his team and saying, let's do what it takes to win, uh, even if it is a little bit risky, if it's uh, unconventional. Uh, but that time didn't quite work out. And, you know, maybe it's just time to punt it deep. Yeah, interesting to just do a wide receiver screen when you still needed three yards and nothing went there. Play action. Steiner had a man open, but a great job by the Granby defender to jump up and deflect it. That is Nkongolo Wakalanji getting in coverage there and batting the pass down. So second and 10 coming up now. Yeah, absolutely a great uh, linebacker. You know, we say it every time. Yeah. Uh, do you want to commit Air Force? Excited to see him and where his uh, football career goes. For sure. Leading the team in sacks and tackles per game. He's a senior. He's been a four-year varsity guy. Both his brothers have been really good for this Granby team, so... So Wiley has some room and trucks a Granby defender to pick up the first. Josh Wiley continuing his great game on the ground, nearing that average of about 78 yards per. So that'll bring up first and 10 right outside the red zone at the 22 yard line now for the Raptors. Granby defense will see if they can continue to get some stops in the red zone. The red zone defense has been all right this game. Here's the snap, it is a pass, quick one, and the man is wide open. Looks like Granby was playing some drop coverage there and Steiner was just able to easily find his guy. 
Yeah, absolutely, and a great way to tackle up by the Grandview defense to uh, uh, prevent the touchdown. Number 17, Coda Becker with the catch. That's his second of the game. But you've at some point, you've got to bat it down in double coverage, so that'll bring up uh, first and goal, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like the Wolves expected a run there. That's why they played some drop coverage in the secondary. So brings up first and goal. Here's the handoff. Reaching for the pylon. Will not get it, just about a yard short. Jackson Flores on the tackle there. Quick Brings up. up here. QB sneak. Into Wiley. Touchdown, Eagle Crest. Looks like that is Josh Wiley in, uh, you know, rewarding the guy for all his uh, hard work on the ground, getting all those gritty yards down the middle and everything, and they reward him with the easy one-yard touchdown to improve the score to 25 to 19 with the extra point up now. Here's a snap and a bit of a short one. Hits the crossbar. Oh, my, unlucky there. So no good off of the right crossbar. Score remains 25-19. That's actually huge because now, instead of it being a five-point game, if Eagle Crest were to score a touchdown had it be a five-point game, they wouldn't need an extra point to take the lead. But now they do because now if they score a touchdown, it'll be a tie game. Special teams have proved to be consequential. A couple of dropped uh, passes from the Wolves and a couple of missed PITs, and now it's a couple from Eagle Crest too. Yeah, for sure. Special teams hasn't been very up to par in this one for both sides. And while we have a minute, we want to take a quick minute to congratulate our homecoming royalty. One of the traditions uh, on the, as we uh, talk to the kickoff, uh, for the class of 2027, congratulations to Noah Blake Dottery, Hanby Joy, and for the class of 2026, Zachary Richards and Caitlin Mitchell. The class of 2025, Kyler Vaughn, who's on the field tonight, and Sadie Perry. And for the class of 2024, Julian DeBorsi and Peyton Belcher. So Neto gets to about the 30-yard line with that return. Another pretty good return there after he fielded it at about the goal line. So Grandview offense hasn't had much going for them uh, recently. They had a turnover on downs and a punt their last two possessions. Uh, we haven't seen really that explosiveness that we seen that we saw in the first half, and we'll see if this drive, they can keep it up. Obviously, we saw Eagle Crest has come close in terms of a one-possession game, but they have never taken the lead or tied the game, and we'll see if Grandview can continue that and keep their two-possession lead with just over a minute left in the third quarter. Yeah, absolutely important to uh, find a quick response for the Wolves. Um, just about a minute four left in the third quarter, just about 13 minutes left to play in this one. Here's a snap, play action, screen, Denton, good blocks on the outside, and Denton falls forward to about the 37, seven yard gain there on the screen pass. So second and two for the Wolves as the Wolves will look to move the chains here. Here's a snap from Zarka, looking, and it's complete, over the middle, just past midfield. That's his guy, Nate Denton, back-to-back -back receptions for him. This one once again moving the chains. So two plays, two decent gains, and they're already in Eagle Crest territory. This is what you like to see uh, on the Grandview side to start a drive with Eagle Crest creeping back into the game. I mean, we mentioned this in the pregame show. Could come down to the wire. Yeah. Looks like it is. So, just under 30 seconds now. Ball at the Eagle Crest 49. Snap by Zarka. Hand off. Here's Blanks. Has some room. Gets the first. Has the left edge. And bodies a defender. for more yards. Taken down at around the 23. A great job 
to get some extra yards after contact there. About five extra yards fighting through defenders. Great blocks and a great decision by Blinks to hit the outside edge. And he has been really great tonight. He is one of the touchdown scorers. And him and Vernon, like we were talking about earlier, great uh, tandem in the, back, in the backfield. Yeah, and at the end of that play, Chris Blanks, a little bit more of a power back, taking his hands and just tossing yeah. a defender uh, off to the side to be able to fight for a couple more yards. So ball at the 23-yard line here, just outside the red zone again. The Wolves have been able to convert once they get this deep into opposing territory. So we'll see if they can continue that Play clock down to three. The snap gets off with one second left, and he just hits his man out of the backfield. A nice juke, but a good tackle by the Eagle Crest defender down low. That is, I believe, Blinks again. That'll be the last play of this third quarter here as... Grandview finds themselves on top in a tight game, 25 to 19. Looking for a career in construction? Join our team at Academy Roofing. Excellent pay, benefits, and training with Colorado's premier roofing contractor. Stop by our office at 1610 Jasper Street or give us a call at 303-360-0708 and join us at the top. So back from the break here, Grandview finds themselves on top, 25 to 19. Homecoming week here, Devin. Uh, last night, the Pack the Den volleyball game ended in a Grandview win in their fifth set against the reigning Centennial League title champions, Cherry Creek Bruins. Yeah, came down to the wire. Uh, great win for Grandview on homecoming week for the volleyball team. We'll see if the football team can do the same now here with a six point lead at the start of the last 12 minutes of play. The first play of the quarter is an incomplete pass intended for Zaynetto on the right side, bringing up third, third and down. six. Some of the other homecoming festivities, uh, Mr. Grandview, congratulations to a, the 2023 Mr. Grandview, Nick Carminati. Uh, the after party and the parade were always, are always fun as Zarkas Pass is deflected. That'll bring up fourth and six. Would you uh, kick a field goal here if you're in this spot? I don't know. I feel like I've seen Chavez have the leg to do it before. But I feel like they need to play a little bit more aggressive. I feel like they need to take a two-possession lead. If they can take a two-possession lead in the fourth quarter, especially with under 10 minutes left, I, I can definitely see them winning this game. Obviously, not the worst decision in the world to kick a field goal now. That will put them up uh, nine. Looks like they which will. Is a two-possession game. So this is a good decision. We'll just see if Chavez can hit it. About a 37-yarder. It's up. Looks. It is no good. Eagle Crest uh, crowd made a got to him a little bit as uh, they started to get a little bit rowdy there. As, as roughing the kicker is the call on Kyle Chavez. So despite the missed field goal, the Grandview Wolves have a little bit of a new life and that'll bring up an automatic first down. Just a terrible penalty for the Raptors. This is a game changing play right here with the missed field goal uh, down six. If they can go down, get a 70 yard drive and score a touchdown and kick a PAT, they are leading after being down the whole entire game. Just brutal. That could be the reason they solely lose this game. So this will bring up now first and 10, the offense back out there in the red zone. Yeah, 19 yard line here. First and goal from the nine yard line. First and goal. So Zarka ready to take 
the snap. Two receivers on his left, two to his right. Here's the snap, play action, screen to Vaughn. Vaughn gets the edge and he's in. Touchdown, Grandview. Kyler Vaughn, the speedster, a great block from his other receiver and he is in the end zone for a Grandview touchdown. Huge play there off the roughing the kicker call and really important their score. Yeah, roughing the kicker call, like I said, could completely change the game. Well, there it is. That just completely changed the game. As I mentioned, two possession lead in the fourth quarter. It would be hard to lose that one, especially for a team as good on the defensive and offensive end as the Grandview Wolves. So just horrible luck for the Eagle Crest Raptors and uh, by the player who committed to roughing the kicker. Just not smart there. Kyle this Chavez. Blocked, blocked kick. So that will keep the score at 12-point game. Um, still two possessions. So not the worst thing, but once again, going back to special teams, it has just been awful for both teams. Really interesting to see the PATs miss two-point conversions, but the Grandview Wolves holding a steady 12-point lead with just 20 seconds into this first quarter, still 11.40 to go. Eleven forty remaining here in this game. Wolves on top, thirty-one to nineteen, on a homecoming night for your Grandview Wolves. Some of the other uh, homecoming festivities: um, movie night on Tuesday, where we showed Cars, a, an excellent uh, film, and great to see everybody come out. Um, the after party, uh, which uh, Nate and I here, uh, Nate behind the camera, working some of the production. Uh, went to on uh, at Grandview TV on Instagram be able to see a bit of that. So this one will be called a touchback back the end zone ball will be placed at the 25 yard line. Yeah as you were saying it's been a great homecoming week obviously sports winning some great uh, outside activities such as Mr. Grandview uh, the movie night and then we got the dance tomorrow and uh, hopefully Grandview can finish out with the win here so Eagle Crest has the ball at the 25 Joe Steiner has uh, two passing touchdowns on the day we'll see if he can uh, will this offense on a quick drive as they don't have much time to spare we'll see if they stick with their more run heavy approach or if they start to air the ball out a little more here and funny enough the Wolves this is actually their second homecoming game last week played Pomona that was their homecoming yep. now their very own so exciting to see them on the field in front of their home crowd and I mean, that's really exciting as a player. So this is a run to Wiley. Up the middle, breaking tackles. Oh, man. Josh Wiley somehow able to pick up the first down as the referee goes down with the pile. So gets all the way to the 33 for a 13-yard gain, and that will move the chains on the first play of the drive. Great start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you want to see Eagle Crest score on this drive if you're the Raptors. So here's Steiner. Quick pass. Caught by his man, has some room, still on his feet. Another juke, and the Grammy Wolves just cannot tackle any of the Raptors right now. Logan Ryan, his number one target with the catch there, has the touchdown on the day, uh, the leading receiver for the Raptors, and they are going in this hurry-up offense that we've seen all game long right now. Uh, tiring out the Granby defense, and we'll see if they can get a score early on. That would be huge for their chances of coming back in this one. So drop yeah, the quick pass. Score. There's some pressure. Looking at double coverage. Almost intercepted. Oh, my. <laughs> Dropped by the safety. That's number 22, Brody Flores, unable to come down with that. That is the third dropped interception in this half that I can count that really is the reason why Eagle Crest is staying in the game. And you feel like a uh, turnover like that, uh, I mean, especially after <laughs> dropping three would be a dagger, uh, being able to uh, force a turnover. So the run is to Wiley. Doesn't get much, about a one-yard gain. Bringing up third and nine. Looks like, you know, the official call would be third and eight. Drops back to pass. The referees seem to get in the way. There is a flag that could be on Grandview, and that could be pass interference on the defense. We'll wait for the call here. Remember, in high school, pass interference, not a spot foul, will be 15 yards for the offense, though. 
if that is the case. So we'll see the refs talk it over here. Looks like that was Jackson Flores and Plummer combining in coverage there. Yeah, both uh, two referees saw the uh, uh, the infraction. Will be pass interference. So automatic first down off of the pass interference. Uh, uh, not a very penalty heavy game so far, but kind of racking up more in the second half as compared to the first half. And that'll move the Raptors very far up all the way right at the 20. We should call at the 20. Yeah, it is the 20. Man in motion. Here's the snap. And the fake. He, he gets it to the man in motion. What a great juke. And he'll be tackled right about at the marker. We'll see if they'll give it to him. Will not be second and one for the Raptors here as they find themselves in the red zone. Eagle Crest. That makes it a six point game here for the Raptors. After the quick score after, and a quick response from the Raptors. So PAT coming up now, six point game, could make it five. And almost blocked, however, it does go straight through the middle. So five point game, 31 to 26. And this game set to come down to the wire here. If you're the Wolves, you need a statement drive. Looking to score, you don't want to settle. You don't want to uh, just get into field goal range and then call it good. Important that the Wolves are able to uh, put points on the board and big ones in a big way. Don't forget this Eagle Crest Raptors team is no team to mess around with. Undefeated coming into league play. Wolves lost to a tough Ralston Valley team to sit at four and one. So the Raptors will kick off from the 35 and Grandview, we'll see if they decide to try to get another score on the board, make it a two possession, and maybe then end it once and for all, or maybe chew this clock a little bit more. So here's the kickoff now. Will be fielded on the sideline at about the 10. Breaking tackles. Has the right sideline. And still going. Still going. All the way into Eagle Crest territory. Down at the 45 yard line. That is Jackson Flores, the freshman. The freshman quarterback playing on special teams with a huge return that already gets them close to field goal range and gets them great field position to possibly put on that second score that could end the game once and for all. Absolutely, and I, I mean, I talked to uh, Mr. Turk, one of the coaches on the uh, defensive side. Fast is what he said about Jackson Flores. I mean, he's a freshman, but speed doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Speed kills, and you saw right there as a huge return from the freshman brings it down into uh, Eagle Crest territory. Quick snap, quick throw. This is Tavon, the speedster on the outside, picks up about seven or eight there, setting up second and short. Second and four is the official call now. And Wolf's gonna try to uh, run down this clock a bit as they find themselves on top. Just about the nine minute mark in this one. So still in the shotgun here, two receivers to his left. Zarka drops back to pass, looking, looking, down the middle. Flag thrown. It was caught by Denton. There is a flag, we'll see if it's on the offense or defense, but pending the flag, that is a huge pickup. A great route by Denton to get open in the middle of the field at the 25. And we'll see what the flag is, but that is a 20 yard gain. So 
So now the official call. It is on the defense, and it will add on to the already long play made by Denton. Yeah, the completion there by Denton. So to bring up first and 10 from the Eagle Crest 32. Ref's going to talk this one over. Not sure if they saw something we didn't. Uh, is the referee going to relay the information to Coach Doherty here? So, looks like it will be first down. The first down will remain. Uh, just a little bit of clarity on the uh, official calling. Will be a first and 10 from the 20 yard line, or the 25 yard line that is. Pitch to Vernon. Able to spin, trying to break a tackle. And that'll be, bring up second and eight. Zarka in the backfield here on the second and eight. Vernon takes it. Spinning, trying to avoid tackles. Still on his feet. Three defenders on him, and finally, they work together to take him down. Looks like that will be just about a five yard gain and bring up second and four. Third and three for the Wolves. Sarka takes the snap, QB draw, stiff arms the man, tries to truck him, and will be short of the line of gain. Good job by the Eagle Crest D-line to continue pushing him forward. Maybe a one yard gain on the play. Gain of two will bring up fourth and one on the play. So fourth and one, looks like Doherty's gonna go for it. Just under seven minutes remain. Handoff, or keeper. Looks like he's short. He is short. That is game changing. Still waiting on an official spot, although it looked to be short. Granby says they got it. Eagle Crest says they stopped him short. Look like the refs talking it over. Officials will talk it over. Looks like the Eagle Crest crowd and the Eagle Crest uh, sideline thought it was theirs. Yep, they will bring out the measure, the measure marker. It's that close. It really is. And looks like he got it. On our close cab here on your screen. Short, Eagle Crest ball. That is game changing, Jake. 
31 to 26, six and a half left in this one. Now is when Joe Steiner needs to step up to his biggest ability. He's had some overthrows, but he's also had some good plays, throws on the run, uh, quarterback runs and everything. This is where he really needs to step up. He has 85 yards to get into the end zone, and if he can get into the end zone, the Eagle Crest Raptors will be up after trailing the entire game. So Eagle Crest needs to put together a good drive here. Meanwhile, on the Granby side, their secondary's got to keep it up. Brandon Carr's got to keep it up, and we've got to see Kongola Wakalanji get some pressure. Uh, hasn't really gotten to the quarterback too much this game and doesn't have a sack on the game yet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to see your uh, defenders step up, and it's got to be important for the Wolves to get a stop here. So first and ten. Steiner takes the snap. It's a pass. Quick one, and it's caught by his guy, Gamble. So Gamble will pick up a gain of about one. Second and nine here. Just about six minutes remaining. Eagle Crest with three timeouts. The Wolves with two. Wide receiver screen, has the blockers, has some room, has the left edge, he has daylight. The 50, the 40, the 30, no one near him, and he will score. Touchdown, Raptors. That is huge. Great blocks there from the offensive line and their wide receivers. And that'll bring up. That is an 80-yard touchdown. Eagle Crest has just taken the lead, 32-31. Huge play here as looks like Eagle Crest lighting up to take two and make this a three-point game. The snap, passing towards the end zone. And the two-point conversion will not count. And really is coming down to the wire here. Eagle Crest on top for the first time tonight. 32 to 31. Just a reminder for last year's homecoming uh, stroke of bad luck as the volleyball team on Pack the Den got swept by the legend Titans uh, for homecoming and lost to Rawson Valley in a nail biter, uh, the football team. Yeah, this would be a heartbreaking loss for the Wolves. There is plenty of time with this uh, Coach Doherty led offense, just under six minutes to go. Um, we'll see if this kick is a good one. It will be fielded at around the 15. Gotta be careful, no fumbles here takes it and Vernon gets spun around and down at about the 30 yard line. So they do only need a field goal. We saw Chavez, although albeit the roughing the kicker, he did miss his uh, around 40 yard field goal attempt. And also he's had troubles on the PATs, whether uh, it be on the line with it getting blocked or him just straight missing it uh, like that one time off the crossbar. So some troubles there might have an impact on whether they decide to kick a field goal or get in the end zone and take a much larger lead if they can get there. But obviously the first step is getting there. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta have a big drive here from Coach Doherty. So first and 10 now from the 29 yard line, Eagle Crest student section is loud. This is an amazing comeback down two possessions. Zarka drops back to pass, looks, evades defenders, looks left, has a guy upfield, it's caught! Dominic heading at the 45, Eagle Crest 45 yard line. Liam Zarka making plays happen on the run throw to Henning for the first down in Eagle Crest territory. Great start. Yeah, absolutely. A huge play there for Liam Zarka and uh, Dominic Kenning as Wolves get off to a, a right first step. Yeah, Do uh, Zarka has been looking Henning's way a lot this game. He looked uh, in the red zone uh, on fourth down, on third down, and now in big clutch moments of the game. So we'll see if they elect to run or pass here uh, just above five and a half minutes. This is a pass. Curl routes. Has a lot of time. Good protection. Looking. Caught. Henning again. Henning again. Stretching for the first down. And it looks like he'll be just about a yard or two short of the line of gain. Down at the official mark is the 37, which should be just about a yard short. 
Second and two is the official call. I wonder if that play from Henning, the play before, was almost the wrong call. Five minutes on the clock, and you want to try to ice, uh, run this down all the way. You're only one point down. A field goal would win it. Any kind of points would win it. So you want to try to eat clock. Eat clock if you're Coach Doherty. Yeah, obviously they want to chew the clock, but that's good because they got their big play, and then now when they're closer in territory, they can chew the clock a little more. As right now, it's not working very well. They're going a little bit backwards. Uh, a bit of an unusual play call. They just needed one yard, and they threw a screen, and actually it appears that they lost some yardage there. Yeah, loss of one. We'll but see third in and two. Interesting pass from Zarka into uh, Vernon, who had two defenders right on him, right on his back. Interesting play call from Zarka. Yeah, it appears that was the design play. I mean, that was like the only option there. Had to throw it, albeit, yeah, you're right, a dangerous play for sure. Yeah, I mean, could have easily been a pass deflection, which might have actually been the better call. Uh, but third and two still manageable. Third and three now, clock ticking, just over four minutes left. Receiver in motion, this is Henning. And there's some pressure, it's a handoff. Vernon, Vernon. fighting for it. And it looks like they're going to say he got it. So Vernon picks up the first down there, moves the chains, a great job to continue to the clock. Just hit the four-minute mark in this game. Wolves down by one. We'll see if Zarka, and we'll see as I was talking earlier, do they want to put the put the game in the hands of Chavez if they continue to wind this clock all the way down, or do they want to get to the goal line and try to punch it in with one of those Zarka read options or just hand it off to Blinks or Vernon to get in there? You still have a ton of time on the clock. First down. Evading left, there's the pressure, somehow able to escape. Oh, oh my goodness! Is. Touchdown, Wolves! Donovan Vernon, wide, wide, wide open in the end zone. And Liam Zarka with an amazing throw there. Wolves on top right now, 30 shifts the momentum of the game. It looks like they will go for two. This is, seems like the right call because, um, 39 to 32 would make it seven point game. So Zarka is lined up in the shotgun here, man in motion. And he'll keep it. Can he get there? He will. Once again, works like a charm every single time. Uh, the keeper by Zarka walks right into the end zone. A great hole by the offensive line. Play on that touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. And I wonder if uh, Coach Dorothy almost left too much time on the clock for the Eagle Grass Raptors. But I mean, no coach will complain about the score. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, that's the plan, but if you have a touchdown, you can't pass up a touchdown, and that's the plan right there. <laughs> and you, you won't see a receiver more exactly. wide open than Donovan was, Vernon. Nobody within 20 yards of Vernon on that play. So three and a half minutes left. Kickoff coming from the 35. Kickoffs have been a little bit of an issue for both sides. Yeah. We'll see if they decide to go with a bit of a squib kick. We've seen that early on. Or if they just try kick it deep. to boot it out of the back of the end zone. And it looks like that is what they will do. And it will be a touchback. So ball will come out to the 25. And this is what both teams practice for. Three and a half minutes. Competitive game. Student sections are rowdy. And Joe Steiner bringing his guys out. Can he have a drive to bring the team to the end zone and possibly tie or possibly win this game? And the run is stuffed. Absolutely nothing there. Josh Wiley picks up no yardage. Maybe even a loss there out of the shotgun. Clock continues to tick. That'll bring up second and 12 here. So a loss of two, second and 12. Clock still ticking, under three minutes here. And the snap. Here's a pass off the edge. Good job by Sander to step up, and he hits the wide open man. That's Gamble. Gamble makes a man miss all the way to the 46 before he goes out of bounds. A uh, bad tackle attempt by the Grandview defender there, unable to take Gamble down. Gamble has been the number one guy for Steiner in this game, and it shows, and it comes up huge right there. Yeah, absolutely, as this one's coming down to the wire. 2.50 left. Yep, clock stopped as Gamble was able to get out of bounds. Ball placed right at Grandview's 49, so into their territory now. And we'll see if they continue to pass the ball or if they pound the rock. 
There's a play action. Drops back. It's a screen. And good job by the defender. Oh, never mind. Unable to get him down. And finally taken down right at the first down marker. We'll see if they give it to him or not. Albeit that will be a 10-yard gain on the screen pass. Will be a first down. They'll give him the first. Clock continues to wind. Just hit the two and a half minute mark here. And this is what was uh, Coach Dory, Tor Doherty might have been worried about giving the ball into the hands of their of their offense. Here's the run, and picks up about three there. Clock continues to tick, and Eagle Crest in some hurry up right here. Remember, no two minute warning in high school football. College are as same as college rules. Second and seven. Steiner trying to get his guys ready, get the snap off in time. Just under two minutes, gets it off, drops back. Wakalanji in his face, and it will be complete to his guy. It will be about three or so yards short of the first down. That'll bring up about three, third and three, third and two. Third and three, I believe the official call will be. So clock continues to wind down. Eagle Crest has their timeouts. Coach Schmidt opting not to use them. Yeah, a little bit of a hurry up offense. Taking uh, some time, making sure the play call is right. Minute 30. Here's Steiner. Man in motion. And it's a handoff. Here's Wiley. He will get it. Still going somehow, some way. And that will be enough to pick up the first. Josh Wiley, number 26, has had a huge game for the Raptors. Clock continues to wind under 120. Interesting that they haven't used timeout yet, but we'll see when they opt to use that. Yeah, all three timeouts left for the Eagle Crest Raptors. Grammy student section starting to get loud. A minute five left now. Steiner takes it, gets some blocks, goes deep, and misses. That's been an issue for Steiner in this one. Some overthrows and that one a bit too far left for his intended receiver, Cam Chapa. So that does stop the clock, so not necessarily the worst thing in the world. 58 seconds, just under a minute. As you said, all three timeouts. Uh, ball at the 28. Yeah, 58 seconds left on the clock. Yes, this one, going to be a nail biter. Steiner hands it off to Wiley, keeps it. Steiner goes, hits the left edge. Still going, still going, and knocked down about three or so yards short of the first. Clock continues to wind. We're going to have to wait and see when the timeout is I mean, used. you imagine that and Eagle Crest there's uses there's one right there. I believe the referee signaling. And, yep, Eagle Crest does call their first timeout right there. A bit late to call it, in my opinion. 43 seconds. Because as the, it now it is third down. They still have around 25 yards to go. But we'll see. So, quick break in action here. Seven-point lead for the Wolves. Eagle Crest has about 22, 23 yards to go to reach the end zone, and they're gonna need the PAT. And Jake, I have a question for you. If they were to get this right here, do you think that they would go for two to win the game, or do you think they would just play safe and send it to overtime? Absolutely, go for two. Go I for mean, win. absolutely. I mean, you see that a lot of the time with high school coaches. I mean, just go, go, go mentality, yeah. and I believe that that's will be the call if it comes down to it. Yeah, we've seen it a lot in this game. Onside kicks, uh, fake field goals, fake PATs, two-point conversions. We've seen it all in this one, so I would also not be surprised if that happens. So the official call here, third and four. 43 seconds left. Student section's getting loud. Grandview defense needs to get a big stop here, and this time Grandview will call their first time out. Didn't like the set. They were in, so a good timeout by Coach Doherty. Yeah, one timeout remaining here. All right, so back in action after two consecutive timeouts now. Grandview down to one. Eagle Crest still has two remaining. Seven-point game. I believe Eagle Crest will have to abandon the run at this point in the game. Grandview crowd getting loud. 
Not in the shotgun here. In the single back, it's a pitch. He has some room, does he get the blocks? Oh, throws deep, but his defender fell down. Oh my gosh, what just happened? And it no appears, flag down. No flags, I saw a man down on the ground, both the Granby defender and the Eagle Crest receiver. It appears as if the man who received the pitch attempted to throw to the end zone, but no one home. And game is on the line right here. Fourth and four, if they convert, the game goes on. They still have two timeouts. If they miss it, game over. Absolutely. Really, really important here that uh, Wolves make a stop. Yep, rivalry game, student sections going wild. This is what high school football is all about. Fourth and four. Steiner in the shotgun, Wiley in the backfield. Three receivers to his left, play action, looking, complete. First down, never mind, incomplete. He dropped it last second, and the Grandview Wolves will escape this one with the victory. Whole team going crazy, Coach Doherty hugging his guys, and a great stop by the defense. Defense has been the story of this one, and it comes up huge. Brandon Carr, the player of the game on the defensive end, making the stop there, and that will do it. Absolutely, showing up big time in big times. Brandon Carr able to find a stop there. And now, all they'll have to do is kneel this one out. Obviously a bit of a scare from Eagle Crest as most of the game Granby retained a two possession, three possession lead. In the second half it became a little bit closer, but now Grandview escaped with the win after once again their defense comes in huge after a scare from Eagle Crest. Absolutely a wonderful game, Devin. You and I said it. Yep. Come down to the wire. Here it is. It. Yep. 31 seconds left on the clock. That was the deciding factor. Exactly. Came down to one play. That fourth down decided it all. I thought he had caught it at first, but I couldn't see from my angle, but it appeared as if it fell out of his hands. So Grandview calls their final time out here. There's quite literally no way for Eagle Quest to win the game, even if they do opt to use their two timeouts just to be petty, but <laughs> 31 I mean, seconds, they can just take a kneel and end it right here. I mean, you could see that, but um, the other important thing is, I mean, what about turnovers? You, I mean, you, uh, you, ball security is important here from Donovan Vernon and Chris Blanks. I mean, you imagine that uh, each kneel down or each run, uh, Eagle Quest uses a timeout, but... I mean, two timeouts left, I mean, you only need three plays. Yeah, there's no way that they can uh, win this game because one kneel down, second down, timeout, another kneel down, third down, timeout, and then another kneel down will just end the game. One Absolutely. Time. So this one's over. Grandview just ensuring everything goes right for their last couple kneel downs. So there they go, Zarka taking up as much time as possible. Smart play there, finally takes the knee. And that's the best formation in football. Victory formation for the Wolves. Eagle Crest will not call their timeout. So that will do it. As time winds out, Zarka raises his arms. Grandview student section starts to celebrate as do the Grandview players. And this one is over. Final score, Grandview 39. Eagle Crest 32, and a great, great, great win for the Grandview Wolves. A gutsy win as well. They were leading most of the game. Eagle Crest gave them a scare. Joe Steiner led a good last drive, but their defense came up big when they needed to. Their secondary and everything else that has been going well all game. Wait, where? And we want to thank you so much for tuning in to GVTV. My name is Jay Chow here with Devin Imster Pasik. Um, he, he's the host here. <laughs> As a wonderful homecoming night. Wolves come out with the victory. 39 to 32 was the final score. We want to thank you so much for tuning in. Have a happy homecoming. Stay safe out there, Wolves. We'll see you next time.